nobile, qual più mal vento, muta d'accento e di pensiero. Sempre un amabile, leggia droviso, in pianto in riso, e menzognero. La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta Welcome to the Whatever Dating Talk podcast coming to you live from Isla Vista, Santa Barbara County, California. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, I'm your host, Brian Atlas. Hi. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's a bit shy. A few quick announcements before the show begins. This channel is viewer supported, so please consider sending a soup chat throughout the show. I will read soup chats $10 and up. All soup chats will be displayed in stream overlay. We've got channel memberships, Patreon, merch, all links in the description. If you become a member, we will shout you out. During the stream, you get a bunch of cool perks too. We got six different tiers. YouTube's doing a promo, it's 50% off. So the first two tiers, it's five bucks and 250. Check it out guys, we'll give you a shout out if you join. We are also streaming to Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. If you wanna be on the show or help with the show, DM at whatever on Instagram. And a quick, quick question for the chat. What city are you guys in? Let us know. Anyways, we're gonna have the guests introduce themselves, so please tell us your name, age, occupation, and or school major. Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Lauren. Hands to the I'm, mic. Oh, I'm Lauren, <laughs> that's my name. I'm from Potomac, Maryland, East Coast. Um, I'm a comm major at UCSB. I thought you were about to say you're a communist. <laughs> uh, not quite. Okay. Hi, I'm Allie. I'm also from Potomac, Maryland. We grew up together. I am a senior at UCSB and I'm a comm major. I'm Tara. I'm a senior at UCSB. I'm from LA and I'm a psychology and philosophy major. Hi, I'm Ashley. I am a licensed insurance agent and I am from State Farm uh, in San Ynez. Did you say age? 29. 29, okay. Um, I'm Liv, I'm 20, from Santa Barbara, and I'm a cosmetologist. Hey guys, my name's Michael. I am 23 years old. I have my own cryptocurrency consulting business. Check me out at cryptocurrency.consulting. What's up, peeps? My name's Chase, 27 years old, professional photographer and brand consultant. Rock and roll. Everyone's Instagrams are in the description. Show them some love, give them a follow. We're going to go back around the table. So current relationship status, longest relationship, and are you on a dating app? And that includes seeking arrangements. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> um, it's over. So yeah, I'm single. Um, I'm single. Wait, what was the second question? <laughs> Uh, longest relationship are you on any dating apps longest relationship was probably a year and a half and like uh, yeah we're on dating apps seeking arrangements. you're on seeking arrangements no, no. <laughs> it's, it's a funny app so you've been on it i've seen this site so you've been on it we've dabbled yeah. <laughs> you've dabbled we've dabbled okay how many sugar daddies do you currently have uh, <laughs> two um, yeah, off the record, maybe two or three. But <laughs> each of you. No, we are a package deal. Yeah, um, we have wait. a joint. Yeah. It's like, what? Huh? <laughs> Actually? <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Sometimes the sugar daddy's like two versus one, and we're best friends, and we like to do everything together. Yeah. So we tried to sell that. So, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, a, I'm just on Hinge. I'm just on Hinge. Yeah, we're joking. We're, I'm just on they're Hinge. They're not joking. That's They're being serious. Yeah. We're joking. Not Tinder, not Tinder. Hinge, though. Wait, so so are your sugar daddies good to you? You know, I wish or else I wouldn't have to have any sort of job. I will say but... they are better to Lauren than me for whatever reason, but they're pretty good to us. Yeah, I guess I just... How old are they? Um... 
50s, it varies. 60s. There is a range. Yeah, there's a range. We'll say like you maybe. You gotta make it through college somehow. Yeah. I gotta say. So are, are we talking 40s, 50s, 60s? What are we talking? Okay, I'm only on Hinge. I don't know where you guys got the seeking <laughs> arrangement. Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys said. Yeah, we've tried seeking. You've tried it? Yeah. Okay. And have you met anyone from that? Yeah, that we've met people. Um, <laughs> we just like go out to dinner dates. Okay, how much did you get paid? Probably like $200 for a dinner date. How many yeah. times have you been on dates like with how many different men i guess i should ask you know um probably like between 15 to 20 dinner dates from seeking arrangement yes are these 15 to 20 with like the same dudes or like different dudes a couple of the same dudes and you get paid 200 each time yes you know consistency that's the minimum has it gone beyond just dinner dates no we're platonic girl. That's okay. Platonic what's, arrangements. Okay. What's, yeah. what's, what's the most you guys have been paid for a date? It's okay. It's yeah, all right. You, 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 can, you, can, you can be honest. Together, like a thousand. Wait. So when we're together, <laughs> yeah. five hundred each. Oh, I thought you guys were joking about that. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. But it's we go out to dinner together because we have good banter together. <laughs> we're like best friends. A lot of stories. Yeah, they love exactly. that. We so it's that. you and one guy, or does he bring but a actually, friend too? But I actually, I hate too? Tinder. Tinder. It's Sometimes they <laughs> say they'll bring a friend. Um, we haven't ever had that, but okay. So, but to Chase's question, what's the most that you guys have ever been paid for a for one date? Five hundred each. Yeah, right? for me, oh, five hundred. Yeah, five hundred. Yeah, five hundred each. What did you? Um, <laughs> once again, I'm only on Hinge, so I wouldn't know the answer to that. I, I'd like to know why do you hate Tinder? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it's just for hooking up. You know, it's not really my vibe. Okay. What's what's the youngest sugar daddy you guys have ever had? Model daddy? Oh. Yeah. I mean, some people are like 23. No That's probably way. the youngest. You had a 23-year-old sugar daddy? Yeah. Wow. Crypto guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's into health and wellness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you're both currently single, correct? Yes. Single. Yeah, okay. And you could get that from there. Longest relationship? <laughs> couple months I'm, I'm not a relationship girl um, what does that mean yeah I guess closer to the mic um in college I kind of just you know played the field per se <laughs> um yeah but I don't like I haven't wanted to settle oh I haven't wanted to settle for anyone um I think college guys are not exactly ready to settle themselves so yeah did you did you enjoy playing the field I did, but I think I'm retired. Retired? Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, a senior now, so I'm ready you uh-huh. know, for life. What, so I'm days. curious to hear, when you say play the field, like what specifically are you talking about when you say play the field? Um, you know, test it out <laughs> different guys, you know, like slept with different guys, I guess. Um, yeah. So I feel like you guys are kind of ashamed of this and yeah. you know, you shouldn't be. I don't think you should. I don't either. It's embarrassing to admit, but at the end of the day, I'm not embarrassed because I feel like I've learned a lot and like it has shown me what I want at the end. Exactly. You know? How else are you going to find out if you don't actually go try it? Into the mic. Agreed. Sorry. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> would you, let's say that you, you know, 10 years from now and you have a, a daughter, would you tell her to go play the field as well? It's a good question. <laughs> so I have a daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So How old is she? She's six. Okay. So of course I'm not going to tell my six-year-old that, but if she's older, I am going to tell her to do what she needs to do to discover herself. If that means doing what they did, or dating and or not dating, oh. that's going to be up to her. I don't think that a woman should be ashamed for experimenting and figuring themselves out, especially when these girls are, you know. You guys are kind of making it shameful that they have sugar daddies, but at the end of the day, they're paying their bills. I don't think we shame them for the sugar daddy thing, but would you be okay with your daughter sleeping with like a hundred guys in her throughout her college career, so four years? I don't think that's any of my business. I mean, you're her, you're her mother, so I mean. Exactly, but she's an adult. I think as long as she's safe, she gets herself tested, she follows protocol, she knows what she's doing, and she's going to be okay with that. 
that that's her choice. So if she was doing, if she was committing armed robberies, you wouldn't try to guide her in a certain direction. Mm-hmm. That's a different topic. You're talking about breaking the law. I mean, I, yeah, I don't really know girls who like sleep for money. It's like not my vibe, but. <laughs> well, I don't know how we're supposed to figure out what we really want and what we really like if we don't experiment, especially in college. Like this is the time to test out different things, different people. Um, yeah. But I, I feel like there's other ways to like test out people than just like sexually. I don't know if we like ha- have to like have sex to like. Like what other ways, Tara? Like just going on, like just going on dates, like getting to know that them. That would I feel be like lovely. There's different ways than you, yeah, like a one night stand hookup to like discover yourself on the one hand, and then also to like see what you like. I feel like there's a million things you should look for in a partner that so you can't see just from like having sex. Do have a preference of a dating app here? Anyone have a preference? Yeah, Wait, because hold, I hold feel on, like hold on, these hold on. Before we go into that, before we go into that, there's this idea that's being put forth about like discovering yourself by sleeping with different guys. And I'm curious, like when you're doing one night stands with guys in college, what are you discovering about yourself in terms of what you like? Because if you're not if you're not dating a guy and getting to know him, if you're just having sex with him or hooking up with him what knowledge are you really gaining from that experience? Yeah, especially like about yourself. Yeah. So I, I didn't take that as they were just talking about sleeping around. A little closer. They also said that, um, you know, they were just going out to dinners and things like that. I think it was just the context well, was taken dinners as aside, were sleeping with people. Din- I don't dinners think aside, was... we're talking about the idea of playing the yeah. field, right? Like if you're playing the field, what are you learning about yourself? So what's your definition of playing the field? Sleeping with a lot of different men. So my definition of playing the field would be going out on dates, experimenting. Yeah, maybe you might sleep with a couple, but playing the field to me in my perspective doesn't necessarily mean sleeping with every single person I run into. Are you girls aware that most guys are not attracted when girls sleep around and play the field? Do you know that most Definitely guys sleep aware around? Of that. Most guys don't but sleep girl, around. Uh, and no, guys, I, what do you mean guys don't sleep around? Maybe the men most, that you're attracted most guys, to. Most guys maybe don't. the men you're attracted to sleep around. But most, when we say most, most men can't sleep around. Oh, yeah, because, like, girls can, what's the saying? Girls can get who they want. Oh, girls can women sleep with who, who they, or girls Women can sleep with who they, they want, men sleep with who they can. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And recently, I actually heard. Um, I think this was one <laughs> from uh, one of the other uh, podcasters out there, and uh, he was saying that men actually have to earn the privilege of becoming a hoe. That's a fact. Men can't just be hoes; they have to work for it. Mm. So, you know, with girls, you can just go out there and get laid whenever you want to. That's, that's a fact. Which I think not a lot of girls realize. I think girls think that like it's a flex to be a hoe, but it's not that hard. I don't know. Ooh, I had someone say to me recently, they're like, cause I was like, I haven't been with anyone in a while. And they were like, how? And you look the way you do. And I was like, it's not like you, I don't get men, but it's like choosing who I want to be with. So I think that kind of goes all in with that. <laughs> but I think that also comes with growing up and learning what you want. Because when we were freshmen, we were definitely excited by the fact that guys wanted us and wanted to hook up with us. But now we're more picky. So I think that's what I was trying to say about knowing what we want when we get older. And, and just to make a comment on your point, too, is that most girls are attracted to the guys that can have sex with a lot of different girls. So when you say men can do it, too. Those are actually the types of men that most girls are attracted to. So then would you say that that would feed the culture of women having that perception that most men do sleep around because those are the men that we're interacting with? Most, most men do not sleep around. Okay, but it's a perception. So do you think that, be, you just said, most women are attracted to the type of man that would sleep around, right? So if most women are talking to those kinds of men, wouldn't that set their expectations up for the rest of men? Because that's who they're encountering, that's who they're it, Yeah, it might, it might set up their expectations, but the reality of it is that 90% of men aren't getting laid. And the 10% that are getting laid are 
the ones that women want. That honestly still shocks me. Like that's like it doesn't. That is like surprising. I guess girls really have like no idea. So you like, guys no like idea. talking from experience here. Talking from experience. Yes. <laughs> a- absolutely. You can't get laid. Is that like what you're saying? No, we're we're not we're not saying we can't get laid. What we're saying is. Yeah, you're the ten like, percent, right? Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. If, if 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 you took a survey of dudes, like the majority of guys that I know, like they struggle attracting the kind of girls that they want, right? But then you have this very small percentage of dudes who are just absolute studs, and they just run through tons of women. Would but you because, put what category would you put yourself in? I mean, I don't I don't run through women, but like I don't have. He much could. Of, but you're more of the like the studly category. What, what I would say is that I don't I, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about how do you become a better man? How do you oh, how do okay. you work on yourself and continue working? Yeah. And I think, especially with with social media and dating apps and, and those those types of apps you can't um you know it's just based off of looks so most most men aren't getting the attention and then the, the men that look visually appealing are getting all the clicks and all the swipes True. okay we're gonna we didn't let everybody finish off the questions about <laughs> relationship stats and stuff so Go ahead. Current relationship status, longest relationship. Are you on any dating apps? We'll circle back to some of this conversation, though. Um, currently single. Longest relationship was a year. And um, I don't like the use of dating apps. I am currently single. My longest relationship was four years. Like I said, I am a mom. Was that um, with the bio dad? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so four years. And I am on Hinge right now, which is how you found me. Um, I am currently single, not on any dating apps. And what was the other question? What was the other question? Longest, longest relationship. relationship. Longest oh, relationship. longest relationship. Yeah. Um, a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. Seeking arrangements? No, no okay. seeking arrangements. I'm in a relationship. It's been the longest one. It's three years long. Um, and I've never used a dating app. Probably never will. Right on. Yeah, I'm single. Uh, longest relationship, year and a half, and uh, not on any dating apps currently. Okay, moving on. So, a lot of you said you were single, but what does that really mean in today's day and age? So. Yeah, in some cases, single people might be having more sex than like people in relationships. That's very true. Is that, is that what you mean? Is that what you were implying? That's kind of what I'm getting towards. So. <laughs> Some of, y'all, some of y'all are single, but what's that really mean, you know? Do you cur- okay, do you currently have a sl- sneaky link? Are you currently seeing someone? Are you currently hooking up? So, no. I, um, no, I've been pretty, like, been having no one for the past couple months, and I've been really happy with that, so I think, okay. yeah. I also do not have a current consistent sneaky link. Um, Yeah. But so you have a sneaky link, an inconsistent one. Perhaps. Perchance. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll change the question. When's when's the last time you've hooked up with somebody? Honestly, it's been a minute. (laughs) Um, Like a fortnight ago? Yeah, whatever that means. 14 days? Uh, Yeah, something like that. Okay been a couple weeks yeah okay um i um got out of a pretty serious relationship not that long ago so i'm just enjoying my time like genuinely having no guys in my life and yeah right now i like love it how long was your relationship it was a year okay how come it ended he cheated okay (laughs) yeah so i do not have any sneaky links um, my dating life is pretty limited. I have Tuesday nights free. That's it. <laughs> so, and I'm here. Um, I was seeing someone and I uh, gave them eight months. And as a mom, I have different standards. And so if you're not going to look for something permanent, then I have to move on. What are those different standards as a mom? So I need to find someone that actually knows what they want, where they're going to go want a family right I'm already halfway there so you have to be committed to wanting those things 
in order to make it, you know, in my perspective with me in a relationship. How many guys that you talk to want those things? Not very many. Do you run into issues with the fact that you have a kid and you're a single mom? Absolutely. How does that manifest? Well, I try to be upfront about it. Like on my hinge, it says I am a mom. I put a picture of my daughter on there, you know. Um, so I try to mitigate it up front. There are guys who try to surpass that, right, and play it off. And then when they realize that I'm not just going to sleep with them, then they kind of die out, you know. Um, there was a situation where I was seeing someone for a year and kind of was letting them go. And it's like, that's a year of my time that I'm not going to be able to give back now. So it's hard. So how, it's hard. How many guys that you're talking to are interested in, like, something long-term, becoming the father of your kid, so on and so forth? Well, I'm not really talking to a whole lot of people. So, I mean, on Hinge, I think I just started conversations with like three people right now. And two of them are already parents, so that's helpful. You, um, you would date a guy who has children of his own? That would be pretty hypocritical. <laughs> well, I, I've... <laughs> Yeah, would. <laughs> you, you say that, but actually I encountered a woman who she had two, at least two children. She might have had three. And she said that she wants to date a guy that doesn't have children. To make her life simpler. It, well, yeah, it would be I simpler mean, for her. But I was like, okay, lady, good luck. Yeah, I mean, I think to narrow myself down and, you know, I want more children. So, I mean, to say, no, you have children, I'm not going to date you would be pretty ridiculous. Hmm. as far as my standpoint is. So total, how many dudes have been interested with the kid in the equation? Two. Is reconciliation with the father a possibility? Absolutely not. What, what happened there? Were you guys married? No, thank God. Yeah, what, what why, happened? Why isn't, why isn't he in the picture? So he's an alcoholic. Okay, that's not good. No, so we tr I. I tried. I tried to work through it. It wasn't working. It was um, an abusive situation, so that was difficult. Um, and he actually assaulted our daughter on a visitation. Wow. And so I have full yikes. physical legal. What a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. That's a yikes. So yeah. that's why I have only Tuesdays free. Makes sense. Okay. Wow. Um, Good luck following that. I know. <laughs> uh, I mean... Not really seeing anybody right now. Last time I hooked up with somebody was like a week ago. Um, yeah, not really. I don't know. <laughs> if I remember, you said that you're not a feminist. Is that correct? Are we bringing that up right now? Well, I just, I'm just saying because you said that last week you just you hooked up with, with a guy, with a different guy? With a different guy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With, with We're going to go around the table on the feminist yeah. question so we okay. can get to that. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I, I might have had a question for you. So you mentioned that the guys are not meeting your standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you go a bit more? Can you elaborate a bit more on specifically what you're looking for in a guy? Exactly. It's not a very Super high standard, standard. Yeah. but... Um, it's not a high standard. It's not a super high standard. I feel like have a that job. this should be, yeah, exactly. Have a job, have a plan, know what you want, know how to communicate, know how to handle your own emotions. Just be an adult, man. Just be, yeah, a <laughs> normal human being, please. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go around the table on this one really quick. You can just say yes or no, whatever your sense of this one is. And just to be clear, so, okay, the question is, do you identify as a feminist? And to be clear, you can believe in equality and women's rights without being a feminist. Go ahead. I would say yes. Yes. No. 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 Based. Definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Definitely not for me. So I consider myself an egalitarian, so... So you two, yes. Maybe no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Group I, think. Come on. Group Don't think be sheep. Good. Don't be yeah, sheep. Yeah, group think. Um, I just think that, you know, um, girls should be taken out on dates. I don't know if that's feminist, not feminist. Well, that's just traditional. 
That's, that's actually that's, that, like, that's, like, that's yeah, like I anti. That's like, yeah. That is antithetical to feminism. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so when you guys say you're feminist, what do you mean? I guess we are traditional. We think men should take care of us, take us out to dates. We both um, like seeking you know. arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. Yeah, something like Super that. Yeah, I mean, I picture myself. I'm like, I want to marry a well-off man. Um, so you guys don't want to be strong, independent women, equal to your husbands. I would love ways. to be a strong, independent woman with also a man who's a successful. So is that feminist? I mean, That's if question. you want your husband to take care of you, that seems antithetical to being a strong, independent woman. I feel like growing up, I always wanted to be a strong, independent woman. But like at this point, I mean, honestly, a lot of times I'm like, I never want to get married and have kids because like men have. Because what? Because why? I don't know. No, is, why? Like, yeah, yeah. Explain men why. Men are just so disrespectful. Men are disrespectful. Now, does that apply to dudes in your age cohort or do you think that applies to men in general? Um, just like a lot of the guys I've met recently. Are pretty. How, how are they disrespectful? Give us a, I'm not it's a good go question. No, yeah, you should explain it. You, um, if you question. want, if you want, you can be vague, but just I maybe mean, give us an example. I mean, we've seen with Adam Levine, for example. Yeah. They Every had an open man relationship. Cheats. They did. I'm pretty sure they had an open. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was open. Okay. But okay, um, so he, so cheating is M. disrespectful. M. These gorgeous women are getting cheated on. So every man ends up cheating. That's not true. Yes, I don't think that's not, true. I just not, never want to get let me, married. Let me state for the record. Let me state for the record. Not every man ends up cheating. The, the okay, men, not the men, every man. Allie, but it, Allie, the men that you're talking about, mm. these are celebrities. These are dudes with a million women okay. that are in their DMs. That's true. That's, but that's very who different. I hear about. But that's so who why I'm we only hear about it because they're celebrities. Wait, wait. Just, just a question. When was your last long-term monogamous relationship? A year ago. A year and ago. It ended very bad. Okay, so did he cheat on you? Yes, he cheated on me. Did you cheat on him? No, I didn't cheat on him. And then he, um, I don't know. But okay, so you haven't been in, you haven't been in a relationship in a year. So what other disrespectful, because I mean, if you haven't been monogamous in a year, what other disrespectful things have men been doing in that year period? It's not like I have to be in a relationship to experience disrespect. (laughs) No, but specifically with cheating if you're not monogamous with a okay, guy then not, not i guess not be... specifically with cheating because i haven't been monogamous you've got me you've got me there wait you've never been monogamous or you've just in the past year no i've been monogamous okay. i just have guys i've also had men not be monogamous monogamous sorry to me in relationships ali have you been cheated on no but i'm i will say i've experienced through friendships i've seen them get cheated on when they're gorgeous, respect the relationship, like worship their boyfriends, um, and they still get cheated on, so it's not all celebrities. You guys realize there's a lot of dudes that are faithful though, right? I've yet to meet them. Okay, well here's the thing though, here's the thing. You guys have lived here in IV, you guys have gone to UCSB, you guys are in fuckboy central. Okay, this is like the place where you've got all these chads walking through the streets, sleeping with tons of chicks, 90% of these dudes that are sleeping with a lot of the girls, they're not interested in being tied down. This is not representative of like all dudes. You guys recognize that, right? We do, but then why would someone like Adam Levine cheat on his model wife? He's a high value man. Yeah. High value men have all the options. So when you say all men cheat, I think you're referring to maybe high value men. And within those high value men, there are still men that will be faithful. But you have to show as a woman, you have to show that you're willing to commit and basically not be a hoe. What? Well, I, th- I think there's also a lot of, <laughs> I, I, think, I think to be fair, to be fair, I think that there are a lot of women who are committed to their high value men. Yeah. But the problem that he's describing is that the top 0.01% of dudes, like I was saying before, they have a million women, really attractive women that are in their DMs. Every day, just okay, like you guys. I will say. And, and that, that is not representative of most dudes i totally get that but many dudes want what they can't have and for example lauren was a very respectful girlfriend in the relationship and still got cheated on was your ex-boyfriend a fuck boy um so he just like run through chicks you know like we were well we were in a relationship so (laughs) i guess i could say no because we were when he's not can in a I just speak on this having having been like pretty recently 
cheated on and now <laughs> that, like, I think that's valid. Like, like, yeah, go, go for it. So yes, I just got. Um, I was cheated on over the past year. It was reason my relationship ended, and it fucking sucked. Were like cruel thing anyone's ever done to me. So embarrassing how it happened. I was. I feel like I was like an amazing girlfriend. Loved that person very dearly. Was very serious about it. And um, but I still like. I'm not gonna say all men cheat because if I have a mindset in my head that like I all guys are terrible. I just truly believe I'm only gonna be like attracted to like terrible guys. Also, it's just like maybe it's a problem with my standards. To be honest, like I just want to throw in one thing too uh, that men can cheat and still absolutely be in love with the girl that they're with. Yeah, I do believe that too. Yeah. From you know, just I mean, I'm a psychology major. I know like how these things work. They're not like very black and white. There's a lot of like emotional, sexual needs involved, like whatever. But at the end of the day, maybe if your partner cheats on you, it just sh- shows that he was like a really low value guy and you should be like having higher standards. I don't know about him being low value, but I would say you don't think cheating like low moral character, low mo- moral character. You don't think having a low moral character makes you a low value guy? Because personally, well, I, I think, do. I I, think if you have to be a high, you're a high value guy to me if you have high moral character. Right. So. I, I mean, like value in terms of like the sexual marketplace. So you mean like dating. mating market value? Yeah, but I yeah, I guess that's true. But I yeah. when I was talking about high value guy, I meant high value in terms of being like a partner, not in terms right. of attractively having sex with. Well, the re- the reason why I clarified is because there's a lot of dudes who have high moral character in that way that you're describing. They would be monogamous, they would be committed, but they're not high value men that can get a lot of yeah, girls. which is totally true. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm curious about something you said. You said maybe this is a reflection upon your standards in men and that the implication was maybe they could be better. Like, how so? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think um, you, I mean, women are the ones who set the standards for, like, I don't know, what treatment you're getting. And you can set those boundaries at any time and wherever you're going. And honestly, I think I was, like, a bit naive when I got into that relationship. Not to speak poorly of it. I have nothing poor to say other than, you know, the fact of what happened about, like, my previous partner. But... I certainly think that like women have the power here to choose like how you're treated and what kind of value men you get. And honestly, my standards did need to be like way higher. And they did, are way did higher. Did you break up with them after he cheated? Um, great question. I um I don't know if anyone here's been cheating. This was just my experience, but getting cheated on brought my confidence from like one thousand to literally zero, like immediately. And it took me probably like six months to regain like my confidence enough to realize like what the hell am I doing? Like, I deserve, like, way more than this. So, no, I didn't immediately. It took how? me, like, six months to realize I was, like, um, doing myself harm by, like, staying with this person. How long after he cheated did you guys break up? Six months. Six? You, you didn't break up for un, until six months after? Yeah. Holy Well, shit. no, he cheated and we broke up. But he won me over and I, like, took him back when I shouldn't have. Okay. So it's because I took, I, I mean, when I found about it, I, I immediately, it was no contact. Did for, he tell you or did you find out? I honestly don't want to, I can't go like we, that we don't, deep we don't into have to it go without, into that. like. I, I have another question for you. Yeah. <clears throat> In the future, so I, I know a lot of girls who have had their hearts broken by dudes cheating on them. A question I have for you. Maybe, also maybe, though, I don't currently consider myself heartbroken. Leaving that was the greatest thing I ever did. I'm like the happiest I've ever been. So I don't con- currently consider that's, myself. That's great in a bad place but that's just good. a scammer that's good with that said i know a lot of girls who've been cheated on a lot and my question is what can you guys as women do to vet guys better so that you don't end up with dudes that are going to cheat on you i think that's part of the process of learning yourself as a woman like what they were talking about earlier playing the field right figuring out your personalities, what your standards would be, what you want to be able to set that level and figure out what it is that you're looking for. Would you be okay with, would any of you be okay with a guy that is able to have multiple partners, but you have to be faithful to just him? Absolutely not. Uh, What woman would say yes to that? (laughs) There There are are some. some. Look at Andrew Tate. If the man is high status enough, there are women that will tolerate infidelity. But I mean, it could be something that's just up front too, where the guy's just like, hey, I'm not going to be faithful. You have to be faithful to me. That's That's what it is. If they're up front front with it. I mean, look, I know other females. I'm not going to name names or tell my relationship with them. 
but I do know females. You can who, if you want. But I'm not gonna. You can expose. Because you know, expose. you have lots okay. of followers. Sure, I don't need ahead, to expose them. You go know, ahead. it's not my particular, you know, approach. But there are women out there who they don't want families. They don't want children. They're just gonna go live their life and be, you know, the equivalent. Those of women siren. are. Those women are usually really unhappy though later on in life. I mean, I'm not saying that they don't exist, but most of the time. Women and people in general want families. And I really believe that that's what makes people most happy in life. Amen. I'm not disagreeing with you, but what I'm saying is that there are people out there that don't share that same value that we're talking about. They, they don't see I think the they exist. They, they definitely exist, but for the majority, like most people want to be happy and, and view having a family as something that's going to bring happiness, real happiness, not like material happiness, like cars and yachts and all that type of stuff well so this this raises an interesting question do you want to have kids um to be honest like i really don't want to get married and have kids but i guess i will if i have to because <laughs> what do you what does that mean alone. nobody's going to force Wait, what you. does what does that mean you will if you have to what do you mean by that don't want to end up alone <laughs> Okay, so so but also I feel like men I don't know. Wait, question. Like, so you would age, have kids just, like, just to like get rid of your own loneliness? No, I feel like I mean procreating is a good thing, so. Do Do you want to have kids? Yes, I love kids. Do you want to have kids? Yes. Well, I you, already you, have do you one. Have, do you want to have more? Kids? And I do. Yeah, I do. She I has want one progeny. More. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eventually, I do. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would definitely encourage you to uh, reconsider the whole family thing. I know right now it probably doesn't sound like something you want, but mm -hmm. you, know, you know what the number one demographic of people on antidepressants is? What, like single people like have no kids? Single women in their 40s without kids. Thank you for telling me that. You got like 20 years though, so you're, yeah. you know, you got time. I think I'm good for now. Well, maybe that's less that's than okay. 20, but that's okay. If the right person comes along, but honestly, everyone I've seen right now, no. Wait, are you two in sororities, by the way? Yeah, I was. But not. We both were. We but not anymore? Yeah. You guys got yeah, kicked not. out? No. no. <laughs> Why did you guys get kicked out of no, we Alpha Phi? I voluntarily I was dropped. Phi. Was it Alpha Phi? How did I guess that? I don't know. Just... <laughs> 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 Attractive blonde girls, Alpha Phi. <laughs> Why, why did you guys, why did you voluntarily drop? And we don't care. Okay, so anyways. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, we I was don't care. But that, that's okay, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so before I get into some of my questions, I'd like, I'd like to open it up to the panel. Actually, before I do that, we're going to do a couple super chats. So uh, really quick, around the table on this one, Stifler, uh, ask everyone to rate their looks on a scale of 1 to 10. What do you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten? Rate myself. Yeah, your looks. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Just be honest. It's okay. I ten. Mm, like a. I don't know. Just, I don't. Okay, just say like it. a eight. Eight. Well, before you said ten. Oh. Were you well, saying that about her? I would yeah. Her oh, ten. Okay. Yeah. You'd rate. Okay, but we so eight. We hype each eight. other up, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe like eight. Seven. Yeah, like six or seven. Michael. I'm definitely at a crypto chad level, crypto chad ten. <laughs> ten? Yeah. Crypto chad ten. All what's right. a, what's okay. a crypto chad ten? I was just reading the chat. Someone said crypto chad. <laughs> yeah, I I'd give myself like a seven and a half, eight on a good day. Okay, I give myself like six, six point nine on a good day. All right, thank you, Stifler, for that. Um by the way, guys, get your super chats in, ten dollars and up. Uh, Mac Joseph, okay. Um, Mike Davis with the $10 soup chat. <laughs> Man, where are these packs of chicks from, Brian? You casting for white chicks too? My business mind tells me I might have to hit up the West Coast oh, and open shit. an STD test spot. Shots fired. Okay, Mike Davis, thank you for the $10 soup chat. Where's, do we have the, no, nah, Mike Davis has not been around recently, so, but we have your vigil portrait here somewhere. Um, thank you for the $10 soup chat. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have to open up some Burger Kings here on the West Coast. Okay, moving on. So I'd like to open it up to the panel. Uh, is there anything dating related you want to get off your chest? One thing you wish men did differently? One thing you think guys get wrong? Something you don't get about men? There's a trend in dating that annoys you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything? Um, I think just the name, <laughs> name of the game is respect. <laughs> Respect. So you, Wait, okay, guys should be more respectful as you're. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like a lot of guys aren't, <laughs> aren't as respectful. I feel like it's not a huge thing with women, but... Um, what does that respect wh- look like to you? Yeah, should we dive deep into this? Um, I feel like we should go around the table more and then I'll get well, more ideas. Okay, we'll do that. I just want to say that could it be the case that it's the men that you are choosing that's the issue? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I, it's probably I'm just, I'm just in a limited pool right now that I would definitely like to get out of. Do you have any guys um, in the friend zone? Um. I, yeah, I've definitely friend zoned some guys. Why? Because um, they're not exciting enough? They're not attractive enough? Yeah, I mean, at this point in my life, I'm young, obviously, so it's not like I'm looking for marriage. I'm not mm-hmm. really looking for kids. So when I look at a guy and like maybe he ticks the boxes more financially, more stability, that's like not really what's in the forefront Are, of my mind. Would you say you're attracted to bad boys? I would say I'm more like looking at physical right now than... F- Okay, their physical appearance. Yeah, because I'm just I'm younger. So. Okay, what's your type? <laughs> Probably like darker features, like tan, brown hair. Okay. Is that were you talking about looks or? <laughs> well, I mean, I was just gonna say you said you had you have some guys in the friend zone, and I'd say the if you looked towards them, they'd probably be the ones that were respectful and loyal. But you're yeah, not attracted to them, so what can you do? Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but. So anything dating related you want to get off your chest? Oh, well, I think the cheating thing is like on top of mind. Okay. Even though so I've never been cheated on. So guys, just guys cheating. It just makes me feel discouraged to okay, something, want to but commit you, okay, to anyone. But you've said you've never been cheated on. Yeah. But it discourages you to commit. Yeah. I'm trying because to wrap my head around Because you've seen your friends that. get cheated on. Yes. Yeah. And I'm very into pop culture. I've seen all these very good looking women get cheated on by men but you realize that's just because those are the stories that sell and so that's the stuff that goes to the top no i realize that but i've seen it through my own perspective with people i know yeah but for every girl you know that's gotten cheated on there's probably a bunch more women that haven't gotten cheated on and have committed relationships yeah i guess (laughs) i'm young and naive still and and you guys are in iv i mean this is like not the place for committed relationships, you know? Yeah. What, what, what specifically about cheating hurts you girls? Like, is it, is it the physical act of it? Or is it the, the potential that the man is going to fall in love with another girl? Well, I feel like sometimes it's not even like the guy likes the girl that they're cheating with. And it's like, not like they don't love you, but they're just insecure, like have other issues going on. But let's say they're just out one night. They're not insecure. And they meet, they meet a girl... <laughs> And they just they have sorry, a good time. I'm sorry if you're cheating. Like I just I feel like you're insecure. I, I feel like that's why you're doing it. At least respect. that's why it's been explained to me. Like oh. respect. like that's how cheating's been explained to me. Well, I, I mean, I I, yeah, I can I can somewhat see that, but I and I think the right way to go about it is to is to really be more honest, just be open about it. I think guys that want to sleep with many girls open about cheating. Th- no, no, that's open no mean? open about no not open about cheating. Open about wanting to sleep with other girls. I think that's, that's fair. why there's what? open relationships. Also, yeah. I think it's so, fair to say that it's not always, like, all on the guy. Like, I can fully admit that, like, I can't blame, like, the entire, like, collapse of my relationship. It's like, he's a terrible person. He's a villain. He, like, never did anything good, and I'm, like, a total victim here. Like, if you're being a good f- partner, I don't know. Like, honestly, mm-hmm. there were ways that I could have been... I'm not justifying cheating, but I am saying that, like, everyone always has a reason for their actions, and frankly, I could have, there were ways I could have been a better girlfriend. How so? Um, just sort of like, I mean, obviously we're both young. We both could have been better at communicating, but I wasn't necessarily paying attention to his needs because I was sort of dealing with stress. But in that way, like I thought I was being an amazing girlfriend, but by giving him like I thought he would like need, but really that like wasn't what he needed in time. And like he needed more like sexual validation and I like wasn't giving it. So Wait, if you're not he, giving- Hold on. He needed more sexual validation? Yeah. So he needed, you, were, you just weren't sleeping with him? enough i was just um or were you not doing the things he wanted you to do that made him feel desired i honestly well i was just dealing with some like personal stuff that made like when you i don't know when you get like stressed and stuff sex is sort of just the last thing on your mind and for him he was taking it personally like if for him he was feeling like unattractive you know your partner's always gonna sometimes like i would have maybe done the same if he was like how long how long were you in a relationship with him a year what was the period of time in which you guys were not having sex? We were never not having sex. But you said 
he just he just wasn't feeling like we were having sex enough okay how frequently were you guys having sex um probably still like i don't know once a day once every other day I don't what, know. Was, I it mean, the, was it the kind of thing? That's a really so, hold on. Yeah, that's pretty. Was it the kind of thing where when he would go to initiate, like he didn't feel your desire towards yeah. him? You weren't into it? Yeah, it was mainly, yeah, it was mainly that. Was it yeah. a chore? Oh, so, also, so did he not sorry. feel like a yeah. connection to you in the process? Yeah, yeah. It was mainly, okay. you know, he just like, that's like, um, like I've totally been in that position too, where sex is an important way of like expressing love and like intimacy and feeling like loved by your partner. And I just like was not doing him justice in that regard. And um, also, though, I do another reason he told me he did it was because a few months before that, I ended things with him. So I broke up with him because I didn't see us getting married. And I was like, if I know I don't see this long term, I feel like I can't be with this person. I feel Wait, like I'm so wasting his. So you guys his. were broken up at the time? No, no, no. We were broken up. Basically, I you broke up broke with up him. We got, got back, back together, together. And okay. he explained to me, like, you weren't sad. I don't know. Like, I wasn't getting what I needed. And I was felt like my ego was hurt when you broke up with me so that's did why you did. did you lose attraction to him or what happened did, was it the physical aspect just wasn't there was it I think it's just the stress just right? yeah just like dealing with stuff and um yeah just so, like busy stuff on on my mind honestly so, i was way more focused on like i need to be i need to like bring him gifts and like soup and a stuff lot of, and he was like that's not lot, what i need right a lot now. of girls say that sex is actually a stress reliever no, I love sex. I yeah. this was just one period of my time. This was like a two month oh. period where I just like was not. I was just like like dealing with stuff and was not being there for him. And he was already butt hurt, so he was like, okay, well, yeah. this but is just you feel like maybe it was possible that you were losing sexual attraction to him. Um, um, yes, uh, -huh. uh, uh yes, yeah. Yeah. Didn't you which think is totally which is normal. Was like, that, I don't think it's a bad thing our relationship was ended. It was painful the, what happened, but was that because of the stress or was that because of how he was responding to it? It was I mean, honestly, it just goes back to um I also feel completely terrible. I feel like I I don't know, I'm really like exposing a lot out of like our relationship, but I'm not like naming any names, so um no, that's good. But I mean, basically, also if this like helps other girls, like I should this, say it. It will. I mean, this at will. the end of the, the day. Reason, the reason I asked the yeah. question is because at what, the end of the what, yeah. Tara, 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 what what you're describing, like this is interesting to me because when I was growing up, I watched my family go through a tremendous amount of stress with things that were happening in our lives. The polarity and the chemistry between my mom and my dad fell way out of whack as they were going through the stress. I think that happens to a lot of families. And like the husband and the wife will stop having sex with one another because of the stress and then the marriage starts to fall apart. So I guess like I'm curious, like looking back, like it sounded like you were going through a lot. It sounded like that made the relationship difficult to maintain with everything that you were going through. Was there anything that you as a woman could have done differently to maybe better maintain this, the relationship? Well, yeah, just, I mean, communicate better. But also, I mean, at the end of the day, I was with someone who told me to his to my face, like, he cheated on me because he needed to for his ego prior and to that's him just, prior to him cheating on you just communication oh um i mean prior to him cheating i probably shouldn't have been with him in the first place okay yeah so that's, that's uh, it's a good not answer. a loss i mean and, and that that's just what it is at the end of the day yeah um of course i'm gonna run into problem and i'm not even i don't i don't take it as like a huge victim moment like i say like oh we broke up because we cheated but it's like the other day i probably should, i'll just say like we're not compatible because so tara I, if you yeah. were if you were with somebody that you were very compatible with do you think you would have found yourself in a similar situation where you were so stressed that you were losing attraction or do you think you would um, maintain the, the attraction no i don't think i don't think that would happen now i feel like i like learned from that yeah i don't know it was just like being more also i was just with someone he just like I needed someone in that time period too. Like I needed things from I needed him, but he he just Okay, we're going to move on yeah, from I know, this. this is fucking boring, um, <laughs> something dating related you want to get off your chest. Okay, so going back to my standards really aren't that high. You guys need to figure out what the heck you want. What do you want? I mean, a lot of guys, if I could be totally blunt with you, a yeah. lot of guys want to be with a woman who doesn't have kids. And a lot of guys also want to see if they can finagle sex with a woman who does have kids. Why? Because dudes are horny and dudes want to have sex. And if you're talking to dudes on dating apps, 99% of them that you're talking to are going to want to have sex with you. Probably a small minority of them are going to want to be fathers to your children. Well, kids are no kids, guys. 
Well, yeah. Fuck. I mean, this yeah. is this yeah. is prior to even having a child. Uh, so many times I run into guys who don't know what they want. They just mirror whatever you say to get in your pants, right? <sighs> so low value dudes. Dude. Uh, low value dudes, but at the same time, it's just over and over and over again. I mean, we're talking about 11 years dating experience right here. I mean, so where do we find these high value dudes? We're, tr- are, we're trying to are make you them. I say my point we're about like the anything you wanted to say about dating talk. We'll, we'll, come, we'll okay. come to you, yeah. Well, it's an answer to that. The, the high value dudes, are they're not going to be there for, for, for women that have kids already. And the, so what about before I had a kid? Before you had a kid, oh, yes. I mean, yes. still, we're ta- high value dudes, relatively speaking, small amount of them relative to most dudes. Most dudes aren't on top of their shit. They don't have their life together. They don't have their fitness together. They haven't built a life that, that's valuable. Most guys are working towards that. Well, I wouldn't even say most guys are working towards that. Some dudes are working towards that, but a lot of guys are just, they're fine just being average, you know? High value men, it's a small pool of dudes which is part of the reason why I, I have a lot of passion for building a culture of building men into high value men. Like I think every dude should be striving to become the greatest man that he can possibly be, you know, but not a lot of dudes have that philosophy. So that's my problem. Yeah. What, it, what are your um, standards for a guy? Like let's talk, let's talk height, let's talk finances, let's talk. So I don't really narrow it down to a physical attribute, right? I can't How tall say are you? I'm 5'2". Okay, would you like, well, you'd be okay dating a guy who's average height? Yeah, like I mean, five, I've nine, dated five, guys okay. that are my height. Perfect. Or even a little shorter. Okay, finances wise, what do How you... How tall are you? 5'2". She's 5'2", okay. two, so I mean, Sorry. it's not, I have it's not hard for a Don't guy worry. to be taller than her. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, finances wise, what, I mean, you, you, I assume that's kind of important because Absolutely. you want to have a family, so um, bare minimum for a guy to make a year. I don't have a standard on that. As long as your bills are paid, you don't have an astronomical amount of debt, you have good credit, so you know at least mid 600s, which is not even good, but it's something you could get a loan. If you don't mind me asking, how much how much do you make a year? I'm not going to disclose that. Can you give us a you don't is it maybe a range? Figures? No. Okay. No. Um, so between fifty and sixty thousand, I'll tell you. That's how much you make. That's how much I make. And would you like a guy who makes at least that much? Well, I feel like if a guy is making less than, let's say, 45000 a year, because, right, there's tradesmen out there that are perfectly good people, mm-hmm. you know. They make good money. They make the great trades. money. They yeah. do. They, I did construction for two years. Yeah, oh. they make amazing money. Um, but, I, again, I don't put it on you know, how much they're making because you can always make more. Okay, so I'm so not going to put that Let's standard. just say, what's, what's the minimum if you were to start dating a guy? I would say 45, if you have a decent job, you're making at least forty to 45000 Okay. If you have a decent, stable job, okay. that's going to be... What, what got you into construction? So, <laughs> so I wasn't throwing the hammer, right? I was doing admin work. Um, but my mom is actually in construction. And so when I graduated high school, um, I got into a couple universities, but tuition went up three grand the, the, at the period that I was gonna start. Mm. My parents weren't prepared. I didn't get to go to college. So I went right into the field and started working with my mom on Mary Medical Center in Santa Maria. I was on the last year of that project. And so that kind of catapulted you live, me. You live up north a bit, San Ynez? Yeah, I live in San Ynez. Okay, the rent, I think, is a bit cheaper up there, so. In San Ynez? Compared, well, compared to, like, Santa Barbara proper. Yeah, it is. Uh, you, know, you know what we should do at some point? We should run the calculator for the, for the girls. The, uh, yeah, we could do that. Maybe the female delusion calculator, oh God. so to speak. Oh, God. The, well, it's, it's funny. It's, 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 funny. It's, it's an interesting experiment. Yeah, well, yeah definitely. Don't, I think, don't uh, take offense to it. We can go through it later. But I think probably the biggest issue you're just, I mean, to be frank, and I mean, Chase kind of already said it, is a lot of guys are going to see, and you seem like a perfectly wonderful person. I, mm-hmm. you're, I think you're attractive. Thanks. But um, definitely still babe status, but I think a lot of guys are going to see, oh, she has a kid. And that's going to probably be a sticking point for them. Exactly. But I'm talking about, I'm talking from my experience with even the men who are okay that I had a kid or that have a kid themselves. They don't mm. have their life figured out. Like, what are you doing? You're, you're 29, right? <laughs> yeah. 29. Um, what's the oldest guy you've dated? Uh, 41. 
So would you be willing to date an older guy? Because I was going to say maybe an older guy. It's it's not still. there. No. Hmm. I find that surprising. I feel like there's probably a lot of older dudes that would love to be with you. You are there in are Sandy There are a lot of Nez. older dudes, but here's the, well, no. Sandy and Nez is already filled with families or old people. Well, yeah, like well, yeah. solving. <laughs> so, Wait, solving or Sandy and Nez? Solving and Sandy and Nez are not even like a mile apart. They're on top of each it's, other. Yeah, it's there's like, the like there's not a, you're in a very small area. Exactly, like, it's yes. pretty. Is it rural? Is it considered rural yes, or no? it is. Okay. I think you got moved somewhere. Well, at the, at the very, <laughs> at the very least, know. you got to take the dating apps and broaden, you know, the map, you know. I mean... Exactly. The San Inez solving area, there's very few dudes there. So you guys are making an assumption that I will only date guys in San Inez. I'm not. Or, yeah, I'm well, not. that's what you're implying. So I, I am, like tonight, after this, I'm going to go meet up with someone who lives in Ventura. And he's going to drive up here. Yeah. <laughs> what? And I'm gonna go get why is that surprising what? to you, bro? Yeah, why is that surprising? <laughs> why is that surprising? You told me I needed to broaden Woman's my horizon, that, right? that's, what, that's what Chase said here. And but. I stand by it. <laughs> okay, so what... Ventura, that's like, you're, okay, that's a 45 minute. Bro, commute. she's looking for love. No, well, he's going <laughs> to meet me here. Okay. I'm not driving oh, anywhere. Oh, he's meeting you here in yeah, Santa Barbara. Yeah, I'm not going to drive down to Ventura. You're crazy. He's going to meet me here. He's meeting you tonight? Yeah. After the show? Yeah. At 10 p.m.? Probably. For a first date? Why not? Why what, are you, what are you guys I have doing? Tuesday yeah. nights free. Why is that surprising? <laughs> well, that's uh, a bit. I mean. We're not if, sleeping together. If you're just looking. Clarify. If you're looking for something, I don't know for something serious it's a bit you might want something but he might have the impression that okay she wants to meet me at 10 p.m on a tuesday she's i'm very upfront. do you think he's watching i told everybody that i was going to be on here so you know you, you want to say hi to him hi <laughs> <laughs> dude i think that's too far of a distance you know a lot of people say when it comes to relationships oh it's about mutual attraction or shared interests or what are the loyalty commonalities shared values convenience i think i'm being a bit i'm joking a bit well, convenience if, is very important if you got to drive commute i don't know i don't can, i'm not going to date some chick in ventura i don't care if she's a 10 i'm not going to go to ventura for her she's looking to a man to properly be with though if if we're talking convenience, obviously you're, you're talking. It's even culture. worse. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's even worse well, for I a serious just, relationship. I will speak personally. No distance. If a woman what? is worth it, no distance is too. Great. You'll go to Sweden. We know. bro. I, yeah, I already went to fucking Denmark, bro. That's like no wait, distance. You, is wait, too you great. actually you actually went to Denmark? Yes, I spent I spent the summer in Europe to be with the girl that I love. How was it? It was amazing. That's one, of the, awesome. one of the best summers of my life. But I think it makes See? it almost worse. Like it's one thing. Bro, if, it's if a you're a true thing. romantic, no distance is too great. Okay. If you gotta drive more than twenty minutes. It's a wrap. Damn bro, off. that's if a wrap. She, if she's worth it, it's worth it, bro. Uh, I mean, the, that's love. Plenty, there's man. plenty of fish out there. I think that's what I'd say on Not that. Not in San Inez and well, Solvang. Well, you, you, you just maybe have that. to, yeah, because of your <laughs> location. But uh, but I feel like I always hear about guys having like girlfriends in Denmark around this area because there's a lot of hot girls in Denmark and a lot of them come to school here okay <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to come in on the um, something to get off your chest yeah just that I feel like girls usually have like a really negative assessment of like are, are always like oh where are all the good guys or whatever like all men cheat or whatever but I don't feel that way I don't know even even though I've like been cheated on I like still don't feel that way I feel like I know like lots of very high value guys and girls telling themselves like there's only terrible guys out there I don't know like who who that serves and also I just think they're wrong like they from are. my experience I've met like quite a few um I have like no like I don't know like upwards of 10 like high value guys that have a problem finding like girls and they are like um you know, how, how do they have a problem guys. Well, just, or just not even that, but that even like high value guys get cheated on. And I think girls underestimate, like even if they see a high value guy, they're like, oh, I can never be with that person. I don't know. But like, um, I think girls think that there's a very small amount and that they're super unattainable. And I super don't think that's true. I mean, on the one hand, you have to be like a high value like woman, but if you're that, I mean, you, I don't think you have anything to be worried about. There's nothing I, to stress about, I, you'll meet them. I'd like to know when you say high value woman, what what exactly does that mean to you? That's a great question. Yeah, someone who knows what they want, um, is very takes good care of herself, herself is has like good sense of humor. 
We don't care about that. <laughs> you don't? Or, no, okay, not at yeah, all. Someone not who has all. high standards for guys who, like, um, has her priorities in line, has a good social life, knows how to have fun, balances things. Here's a question. What do you think makes a good wife? I feel like I really don't know what to say about this, but I'm guessing it's not that much different than what you would want in a good husband, considering it's like a partnership. It's very different. Very different. Okay. Yep. Well, then I'm guessing it's someone who's more of like the, I, I guess that is true, but I guess so someone maybe more of like a caretaker, nurturer, um, has like, I mean, I know for me as a wife, like my number one priority will be my kids, making sure they have everything they need, raising them properly. No, that's a good correctly. mother. That's being, um, that's being a good mother. But let's, let me reframe the question. Yeah. I want you to picture like the perfect guy in your mind for you to marry. Okay. High value, yeah. handsome, probably funny, makes a decent amount of money. Okay. A guy like that is going to have a lot of options that he can pick from. Yeah. He's going to be, if he's looking for marriage, he's going to be looking for a woman who's going to make a good wife. Yeah. Because there's women that make terrible wives and there's women that make great wives. What do you think you would need to embody as a woman to be that great wife for a guy like that? Someone he would want to wake up to and go to sleep to every morning. So someone who will make his life positive, happy, fun, be the peace, not the pain kind of deal. So yeah, just fun, positive, loving, hot. It's fun to be hot. So healthy, like has their priorities in line. Yeah, and enjoys them and appreciates them. I Things like how you amazing. started that answer. Have you guys ever heard the saying, it's a woman's job to make her man's dick hard, not his life hard? That's mm -hmm. disgusting. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's true. true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I, I actually just saw something pop up just now that said, high value men don't cheat on high value women. Well, he wasn't a high value guy, so I'm not worried okay. about that in my case, but yes, right, that's right. a great but, point. But, I, but I totally the points, the true. points that it's really rare to find a woman who's truly high value, meaning that she, I think that's true as well, that yeah. she, she yeah. understands, she understands how important it is to, yeah. that she respects the man that, that, that she's with. One thing that I don't think girls know enough about and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's that guys care way more about respect than I think girls think they do. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah, that's I think huge. I think girls don't know that. And and so that is the number one thing that like one of the main things that I look for like in a partner. Well, that's how that's how someone we, I would respect that, and am I showing him That's how we operate. I mean, that's how me? that's, that's how men right operate. We yeah. we operate girls off of respect. That. Girls literally we say like, "Oh, we want respect." If girls want to respect, they wouldn't choose guys that disrespect them every day of their lives. I'm telling you, girls don't care about respect in the way that guys do, even if they think that's why this e that's don't. why this equal thing is this, that's why this equal list. thing isn't isn't right because you know you'll say a guy will say we need a woman to respect us, but we don't respect women in the same exact way, and girls will get upset by that. But it's not the same thing. We love women. We we have to be respected in order to love them. So a second ago, did you say that you want a man who you respect? Um, Something yeah, I lines. mean, if you don't respect, I mean, I feel that way with friendships as well. I mean, anyone in your life, if you don't respect them, they shouldn't be in your life. You're wasting both your time. So I love that you said that because this is, I think, one of the biggest problems in the dating world. A lot of guys are not worthy of respect. They don't command respect from their women. And it's not, it's not the kind of thing that you have to command, like, you have to respect me. It's not that kind of thing. I think dudes earn respect from their women yeah and it's an earning thing it's you want it, to it's it's a it's a fun like positive thing to seek out guys who are worth appreciating and appreciating them like that's that's so, like a win-win scenario yeah so I, I was going somewhere with that my question to you is what what makes a man worthy of respect in your eyes as a woman that's that's a great one it's okay so worthy of respect he has to have respect for himself for his body for his family for his friends, know the worth of um, his social relationships, know the worth of his work, be um, ambitious, have like a genuine desire to contribute to his community, understand boundaries, be polite. It's kind of like a, a long way. Do you like, do you, do you think it's a good thing when there's boundaries in a relationship? Like Absolutely. It, is, it, is it a red flag for you if a guy doesn't have boundaries? Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? What do you mean? Like when I say boundaries, I'm saying like if a guy, if a guy just doesn't just lets his girl do anything and she can really control him because a lot of girls will push that. They'll, they'll, they'll push for a guy that lets them do whatever they want to do. 
but then they'll leave him. So what, I, what I'm saying is... That comes down to respect. That comes down to respect. Yeah. So um, boundaries, I think, are extremely important in a relationship. Or, or trust. Like if people trust each other in a relationship, they're, they can do whatever they want to do, kind of. Not like that, but I think it's also trust and respect. So can you get like, so for example, like if you're going out on the weekend, like should, the, should, should your boyfriend let you go out on the weekend to the club? Yeah, a hundred percent. Should your boyfriend regularly let you go out to the club without him? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if my boyfriend, I wouldn't care. If, if, as long as I trust him. No, I was asking if, if he should be cool with you regularly going out to the club without him. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, obviously it's not like a one-way street. If, if you had a boyfriend and he was regularly going to the club without you, you wouldn't see that as a red, red flag? Okay, if he was going to the club without me and I wasn't there, for example, I'm like living in another state, in another city or something, but like if we're in the same place together and we're not going out together, like that's a red flag, but... Other than that, I'm like, live your life. <laughs> I'll speak for myself on this one. Like, so, okay, I don't go to bars. I don't go to clubs. I don't go to parties. I don't want, a, like, if I'm going to take a girl seriously, I don't want her going to bars, clubs, and parties. Same. Just be, one, it's a commonality thing, but also, two, when women go to bars and clubs, that's how you flirt. You just... Sh that's how women flirt is by showing up, just being there. So it's basically infidelity. It's one of the biggest red flags. Uh, okay, I don't really? see it that way at all. Mm -hmm. so. Really? That's, yeah. that's very that's interesting. Like just, I mean, why, why is it interesting? I think that's interesting because me as a female who, you know, I like to go out. I get out maybe like once or twice a year, but I, mean, <laughs> I like to go out. When I go out, I'm not going out looking for a guy. Yeah, I'm not going exactly. out looking to flirt. I want to dance. That's what girls say. Time. That's yeah. what girls say. I, like, I think almost all like girls say that. Go, like, okay, but no, that's not true. That's I not true. It. You yeah, you no, could say that. Saying. Keep saying it, but but you know you know very well when you go out, you're looking for attention. Um, not really. Yeah, even that's if you're not looking for a guy, you could be looking for attention. Why would you? Why else would you get? I feel like even if you're not going out looking for a guy you're looking for attention why else would you dress why else would exactly. you spend exactly spend one hour putting makeup Facts. on put attention on these sweaters yeah. out that you own <laughs> it's at least attention and i think girl time. i guess it's more that girls don't think like oh if it's just like attention it doesn't count if you're that's not what you do when you're just hanging out with your girlfriends you're in your pajamas so attention is all right all right Here, here's a question to settle it here's a question to settle it you guys say you disagree would you still get all dolled up to go out to bars and clubs and stuff like that if, if there, there were was, only if there women zero present. guys there? Yeah. You would. Yeah. Maybe I not would. as hard, but we would still want Some to girls feel go ourselves. Both ways. Yeah, to yeah. probably yeah. probably yeah. to take I'm photos like, and then us post them. makes us feel better. Sometimes about I don't TV myself on, up TV. To <laughs> walk down the street. Like, but but this whole to to the this whole idea that girls dress up for themselves that's that's bullshit. That's bullshit. bullshit. That's so bullshit. Like expensive make it expensive. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. One mic at a time, please. So do you want to say something and then we'll let Tara go? Okay, sometimes I just do my makeup for absolutely no reason. Like, yeah, when we feel bad about yeah, when we feel bad about ourselves, internal we're like, we need to, like, get yes. Allie will come into the bathroom. She'll be like, "Are you doing your makeup right now?" And I'm like, "Yeah, just like for no reason." Because we want to feel better about exactly. ourselves, so we want to look good and you guys feel don't ourselves. understand it. No, that's understandable. I get yeah, that. it's not for a guy all Sometimes the time. Sometimes I just want to take but, pictures. And like, but, that, yeah, that's but, 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 you don't understand it. And you never will. You said, you said sometimes we, we just want to take pictures. Who's looking at those pictures? Boys. And We're not girls. Post that. And girls. Because you want, you want female attention so much more than male attention. Some girls go both The only ways. reason you want girls' attention true. seeing you look good is so that they're jealous of you because you're getting male attention. I'm convinced of that. I have one. I'll let you come in okay. real quick. One quick question for you. So you said one of your big issues is that men cheating, right? If you could find a guy that you, let's say, in magical world, you guaranteed knew that he would never cheat on you. His one condition, though, is that you could not go out to bars, clubs, and parties anymore, ever. Would you be with that man? Ooh. Absolutely not. Oh, there it is. Man. There it what is. What do you mean? Of course not. That's controlling, and I'm not here for it's that. Not, it's it's not. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's what Brian's getting at, okay? If I find a girl that I want to make my wife, and I find her super attractive. Make your wife. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because that's what I would do. I would make her my wife. I would ask her to marry me and then make her my wife. 
You say you are a feminist. You're 100 percent. That is feminist. <laughs> you look. You like, you heard me about. say that. Oh, you I'm heard. Make her my wife. Like. Yeah, because that's what I would matter. do. It's I, like, I, I'm an equal human, the woman. It, well, it, you you, it's you, not about you, you say to that. Make her your wife. Obviously, she would want to be she my wife. She has her own life. She wants to be your wife too. Yeah, of course, but she's she not going to go she's, to the club. She wants to do her makeup. No, she's not going she to want to go to clubs. She's not yeah, going to want to go to clubs. No, because here's the thing: that's a non-negotiable for me in marriage. Okay, well if then, I, if good I find if I find luck. a woman, if there's plenty of women out good there luck. that don't want to go to clubs all the time. Okay, well. There's plenty of women out there that don't want to go to clubs girl. in tiny little dresses and get hit on by guys all the time. There's plenty okay, of them well, out maybe there. Maybe they just don't want to be hit on all the time, like. They just want to go and have a good time with their girlfriends. So okay, you're that, telling that's, me that's fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Let me make my point because she interrupted me. Okay, fine. What Brian was getting at, <laughs> if I found some great woman, she's beautiful, I want to make her my wife, okay? If she's like, yeah, I, I want to go out to clubs all the time without you, it's like, okay, I, I, I don't want that because what happens is beautiful women go to clubs and they get hit on by chads all the time. Okay. And I don't want her in situations like that. That's so you a reasonable only thing ex- to you want. You only want to go with just that girl. Never, never. I mean, I would be girl. making her my wife. Like I, you know, we, we would want another woman if she's my exactly. wife. Exactly. Men would still, men would still have relationships. We would still have relationships with her. What if you just want to go with your friends? Like you really just, okay, like that, you that's, just want to go out with your friends one night. That's fine, but that's different. This, we're talking, we're different? talking about a club habit versus I just want to go out with my friends one okay, night. Okay, but They're what if you totally want to go with your friends to the club? That's what I'm talking about. Like what if I want to go out with Allie to the club? If I'm married, I don't see any reason why my wife needs to go to a club. What if she invited you? Okay, I think we're talking about in the context of marriage. We're both young and we like to party. What, why do you say my wife? Like, why are you saying like yeah, my you're wife? Like my wife. Like, okay, so you can go. To, can you go to the club and your wife can't? I don't like. I saying? don't like going to clubs, and I don't want to okay. be with a woman that wants to go to clubs and get male attention. I think it's oh, wow. different when men and women go to the club. The experiences that the two genders have are completely different. Um, I, so I think it would be a bit more acceptable for the guy to want to go. But I think in our case, I don't go to bars, clubs, parties. So, and I think that's the case with Chase too. It is. So, not only is it just a commonality thing, but it's also just, yo, know, you're going to the club, you're getting drunk, guys are coming up, hitting on you. There's a potential for you to monkey branch. So, like, if another guy comes up, fucking some super high status guys, you're basically, when women go to bars and clubs, you are putting yourself in a position, you're putting the relationship at risk. What, what's what, a men just do, can't do people like, keep it to themselves? What, okay, when alcohol when alcohol is is involved, do people cheat? Do you think alcohol adds to the potentiality of infidelity? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Heightened yeah. stimulation. Yeah. Oh, this is really exciting. Oh, I'm with, I'm with all my single friends. They hate they hate fucking Chase. They hate Brian. Lauren, can it's I just can I, ex- I can I explain ridiculous. to you something? Can like, I explain to you something? What? It's Lauren, right? Yeah. Okay. I have met probably seven married women in the past five years or so that wanted to cheat on their husbands with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Dude. If you I were, can relate, bro. Yeah. If you were my wife, you're an attractive girl. Okay. Well, I just went to Cabo, and every single guy there was on a bachelor trip and was trying to fucking cheat. So. Okay. Nobody's loyal. That's not true. There are people that are loyal, but if you were my wife and you were like, hey, I wanna to go to a club. One of the reasons why I wouldn't be cool with it is because if you went there, being an attractive girl, every dude in that club would see you walk in, they would ask if they could buy you drinks, they would start chatting you up, they would start flirting with you. that's on trust, and then that's like where you have to have trust in the relationship. There's plenty of husbands that trust their wives and their wives still cheat on them, okay? All it takes is a woman being around a guy who's charismatic and good looking enough to talk to her just the way that she likes, She'll cheat. But that's what you say, and you don't know that for sure. Because I've seen it over and over again. I've, I've seen, seen it. I've seen it too. I've seen, it too. I've seen it too. I've seen that with men. But look which, at the which stats. Is, which, the is, which is part of the reason why I won't be going to bars or clubs either, because I'm a man and I know that I'm okay, tempted. So you're not going on no. any bachelor trip. You're just you're staying in. If I, if I'm if I'm if I'm married, trip. I'm not putting myself in a situation where I'm going to be getting drunk around attractive women and. and so are you with and your and wife? You're going to go on like a trip together? No bachelor trip for you. Together. I don't, I mean, I don't know. It, de- it depends on what the because bachelor trust trip entails. Me, I have met but, a lot of guys on bachelor trips, and the groom is always down to cheat. I think it's different. I think that's, that's just wrong, like a, and I disagree not with a great that. Guy but that's then. not all guys. Okay, so no that's not all guys. For you. Uh, hold on. 
you, you, you're, you're, you're using this one example. I know like five dudes, five of my friends that are married, okay? None of them had bachelor trips where they were putting themselves in situations oh, it's where all they were going to cheat on their... What? Is it all in the women? No, I'm not saying it's all in women, but you're saying all guys <laughs> cheat on bachelor trips, no bachelor trips, bachelor trips are bad. But it's I'm true. saying, <laughs> Lauren, I'm saying there's dudes that do bachelor trips and they don't put themselves in situations where they can cheat. Guys that do that are shitty guys. Okay. And that's my point. You're saying all guys do so this, but that's not all guys. For women. What do you mean? What's the flip? I just explained it. Going You're to saying, clubs, okay, getting so, hit on, all that so stuff. Women just basically leaving their house, going to the bar, going to, going anywhere social. No, not going anywhere cheese. social. We're talking. We've been talking about going to a club. Okay. A cl sorry for banging. <laughs> a, club a club where women are in tiny dresses, getting drunk with a bunch of attractive guys. It's totally okay. different. I'm not saying my <laughs> wife can't different. leave the house. I'm not saying my wife can't leave the house. I'm not saying she can't go do Bars social and clubs things. Are the same thing. The same thing as Trader Joe's. The same I, thing. The I'm same thing is going out. Joe's. The same I'm thing. About the bar and the club. The same thing is going to a restaurant with her friends or going and doing some outing. They're not the same thing at all. I just think it's ridiculous. We'd even try to say like someone like you a think human it's, being can't go where they want to go. You think because, it's ridiculous oh that I, as a guy, would not want a wife putting herself in Me situations. As a girl, I can dress just listen I want. to what I'm saying, Lauren. You think it's ridiculous that I, as a guy, want a wife not putting herself in situations where she will get hit on by drunk dudes and where she will get drunk. You think that's ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry, men should be able to control themselves. But see, the, this is the part that I, I don't think you're quite understanding. So is that you can do you can do what, whatever you want, but you don't have to be with that guy. If you want that high value man, you're gonna have to sacrifice if certain I things. I'm with. It's fine. I'm not about to cheat on him. Like when but I'm it, out at the bar. But what if that if guy? Can hit on me, what that's fine. what about cheat. what about a guy that you're with? Like you're with this guy, and he says, "I don't want you doing that." Then I would say that's controlling, and I don't want to date that guy. So you you'll never love a man that's that's like that. Yeah. You're saying. Yeah. No. If but I but I'm afraid I'm afraid that that's going to be a problem for you because then those are well, the guys. Well, if it's a problem for me, then I'm never getting married, and I've already kind of thought about that's, that. But so that, that's but that's what's fine. happening. That's fine. That's your choice. So you value yeah. your freedom to go to bars and clubs. I just value over... my freedom and independence in general. But I mean, part okay. So part of being in a committed mo monogamous relationship involves a uh, a limitation of your freedom to for example fuck other men yeah, it's a yeah, sacrifice no, I, I don't want to do that you don't want to make sacrifices make for the relationship okay but I so absolutely. so you're willing to only sleep with one person but so why not be willing to not go to bars and cl and also i think it's like if you because go out once or twice no, a year no. with like it's some birthday party i think that would be okay right Chase? yeah it's fine but if it's like it's not a big deal if it's like weekly thing Weekly, like yeah. I How know old you are you wanted again? to come in. I know you you yeah. How old are you again? I'm 27 years old. Why do you ask? Trying to put a limit on where I can go right now. Like, I think you're putting there's me in jail. a difference because putting no, you no, in no. Jail because you can't go to clubs all the time. I think we like to go time. out more because we're we, still 22 yeah. years old. We enjoy going to bars and clubs and getting attention from men. <laughs> yeah, um, and that, that's and fine. That's fine. That's your guys' choice. You're you're yeah. free to do it, but it's probably going to it makes you less of a appealing person to be in a serious relationship with. Well, I get that. And I think we don't want they don't that right want now. The high, they don't want high so value I men that want to commit to them. If yeah. I was 27, 29, whatever, I would want someone who wouldn't go to bars and clubs because I would be insecure that they would cheat on me. There this is go. the problem. Thank you. But, so the, but they, this is, this is the problem right now. This is the problem that we, ha we have right a problem now. right now, though, which is that girls realize this at too late of a time. So... They're realizing this shit at 27. Did I realize it earlier? Yeah, because yeah. we're talking about, I'm 23. I, and I think a lot of guys out there that are listening too, they're younger. We're realizing this stuff right now because it's important. And girls need to realize this at a younger age as well because 27 is too late. Then you've already, you've already experienced everything that you probably are going to regret at that point. You might even have a kid at that point. You might be in a situation that's, not, that's no longer attractive to find that type of man that you want to be with. So you maybe so you girls just don't focus on like finding a man maybe you just like focus on yourself but that's what girls are doing and it's leading to the to the most depressed women of all time I I think okay he's right yeah, go ahead you wanted sure. to come in so I think that if anyone is habitually going to a club outside of the once or twice a year um, I think that there's a deeper issue that you need to ask about that person not necessarily the attention they're seeking but are they alcoholics 
are the, like who, if you're going out to get drunk once a week at least i think we're talking about a deeper issue than just cheating i think we're talking about addiction here i mean that's pretty much the norm in, for people who are in college probably yeah. thursday friday saturday at the bars clubs parties and stuff um i'm not is would that constitute it probably i mean uh -huh. alcohol yes. i think call Honestly, college is like a uh, fast track to being an alcoholic. Uh -huh. but <laughs> yeah. You're talking about binge drinking. That's what you're okay. talking about. That's did what that's did you have more on that? or? That's really, I think that was the disconnect at the beginning of the conversation was, would your wife be allowed to go out to a bar or a club? So in my mind, that's once or twice a year. What's the big deal? The, it, you're it, talking it, about habitually. That should go for both partners. Nobody yes. should habitually be going out. Yeah, and I tried explaining that. and. In case it wasn't clear to the viewers, this was not about whether or not you would let your wife go to a bar or a club. It's would you want a woman who's regularly going to a bar or a club without you? Or would you want a man who's regularly going to bars and clubs without you? Okay, maybe not regularly. I'm just saying, like, as long as the option's there and there's no, like, you can't do this, you can't do that. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if, I, if I have a high level of trust with my wife and like... I'm saying every once in a while it's fine. I'm not saying like you I'm going You are so bad about night. interrupting. It's crazy. Okay, sorry. You, you build trust though. You have to build trust by not having these beliefs that you have. If, you, if, if the man that you're with is, knows about you, that you think going out to clubs, staying out late, getting drunk with your girls is okay, he's not going to trust you ever. Because that's not something that we look for. Yeah, and like the same goes for that's, the opposite side. That's fine. Yeah. And that's fine. That's true. Yeah. That, that's totally yeah. cool. You can ask for that in a guy too. And, and a lot of guys will respect that. Well, oh. we look for that. Liv, was there okay, something cool. you wanted to say before you... Um, no, I'm just, I'm just taking it all in. I think that you get what you attract. And, you know, if you're a young girl and you are dating a young guy who also likes to go to clubs, then you guys are a perfect match. If you're somebody looking to settle down, then you're going to attract somebody who's going to settle down. Yep. That's all I have to say. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to move on from this conversation we, to our next topic here. And then we will pick up back on the anything you want to get off your chest dating related. We will get to. Did you Lauren, have something you Lauren wanted? absolutely roasted but, in the comments. Just no. but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. About actually, that. let me do one super chat really quick because we got a, uh, one of our regulars back in here. Davon Jackson. Davon Jackson, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. Y'all are literally defending the poor mental mentality that'll have y'all single and wondering why good men won't commit yep. to you. Yep. This is a fact. <laughs> Boom. Mic drop. Boom. <laughs> Davon Jackson, thank you for the ten dollars super chat, man. Much appreciated. I mean, like I said earlier, I mean you guys said, well, the big your big quarrel with men is infidelity, but the men you are finding are tolerating your Thoughtery. borderline alcoholic partying behavior so, <laughs> so it's true i mean it, <laughs> it's true it it is. so how how should we drinking. act to attract guys that want to commit to us and won't want to be women that are worthy of commitment I've just been okay but we're 22 poorly. how would you want what would you be attracted to as a 22 year old man a woman that's not going to bars and clubs every when you're Thursday, 22 Friday. yes I mean, look, there's plenty look. of men that yeah, don't I'm fuck just... with going to bars and clubs and all that shit. Liv, what's your opinion? Thank you. Um, I think, like I just said, um, you're going to, as a young girl, I mean, I understand both sides because I've been on both sides. I've wanted to settle down, and then I've also had my party stage where I partied really hard in high school. So I feel like I got it like out of my system very fast. But then again, I still have my nights where I want to go out. Um, if I'm dating somebody, I would like to have them there with me. I feel like it's just fun when you can go out together. Um, and like, yeah, like I said, you're going to attract what you want out of a relationship. If you want to go have fun, you're going to date somebody who's going to have fun. Not like people who don't go out don't have fun. But if you want to date somebody that goes out with you, that's more power to you. If you want to date somebody who is more ready to like settle down, get a life started, kids, whatever, then that's what you're gonna have. But it will never work if you have somebody who is constantly wanting to go out and you wanna, you know, get things moving. So I think it's more of you just have to come to a mutual agreement of what you both want and it's better to find that out sooner than later or else it's gonna be ugly. And we don't even need to be ready for marriage or anything like that. 
it's it's pretty simple. Just don't be going out. Don't be getting drunk with your friends. So don't, what? I'm not saying don't ever go out with your friends. I'm saying like if that's a normal thing, if going out with your friends and getting drunk at at night in clubs and bars and doing all that stuff is your thing, we don't want that. We want you to be with us, and we want you to ask us so to go out. So you're generalizing a group well, of also, people that like to go out and. Go Hold when on. you were 22, what did you guys do for fun? That was last like, year for me. Yeah, yeah. Like and how did you, where did you on, meet your hold girlfriend? Hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. Curious. <laughs> I was 22 five years ago. Me and all my wow. boys were talking to a lot of girls, okay? If any of us were talking to a girl and we liked her and she was going out to parties, we were going out to parties too. If we liked her and we wanted to date her, you know, we'd start talking to her. And then at some point in the relationship, the conversation would come like, hey, we should start spending more time with one another. And if at that point in time, the girl was like, well, you know, I also want to keep going to parties without you, then it's like, okay, well, I, I don't want to date you then. If you find a guy who wants to spend time with you when you want to go out partying and going to clubs and stuff, like that's the guy who's going to commit to you. And if it, if it means you sacrificing going out to clubs every single weekend to be with him, like, that's the sacrifice. That's the compromise Can that you I have say to make. Something? That's yeah. the compromise that you have to make for a guy that wants to be with you. And it doesn't mean that you can't ever go out. Like my boys would go out with their girlfriends to parties all the time and stuff. Like you can still have fun, but that's it's a pretty small compromise to make for a guy who wants to be with you. It doesn't mean he's going to control your whole life. It just means you can't go to frat parties every so single So why do day. girls think that, that it's the end of the world? There's such a focus like on going out in clubs here. Like that's not even I feel like the focus of most relationships are like a huge point of contention almost. I feel like we're really Because most chicks don't want to go to clubs here. all the time. Like to be honest, it's like I can't really even speak on it because I'm not in a relationship right now. And if I were in a relationship like I don't think I would even be focused on this going to the club, not going to the club, bars. But like, that's what's gonna that's what's boyfriend. gonna cause you end up breaking up with them is is the fact that it's gonna come down to something where like you do go out and then they're gonna get upset about it and then you're gonna call them insecure and do the whole thing where that you're saying that's like just Can I say something? Yeah, I'm saying that's what that's what <laughs> I am yeah, I am yeah. curious to hear yeah. from you. Let me get the super chat really quick then okay. we'll have Liv coming in real it's quick. Okay. Dave on Jackson <laughs> with the ten dollar super chat. You keep saying I'm twenty two like it's it's an excuse. You aren't a child and are able to make grown decisions. I met my girl in Barnes and Noble. King. Is that store even Barnes still open? King. I love Barnes and Noble. Borders? Is that? Okay. Yeah, it's Borders still around. Hey, Devon Jackson, thank you for the $10 soup chat, man. Much appreciated. Go ahead, Liv. I just want to say, I understand both sides. They are younger. So who... Who goes to say that they don't meet somebody later on that completely changes their mind? They might. I hope they do. <laughs> but if, the, if it doesn't happen, I mean, that's their personal choice. But at the same time, there could be a man that comes into their life or a woman, you know, um, you know that makes them want to change. And that... I hope they find them. Yeah. But if, okay. So if you're going through a party phase, you're almost sort of necessarily also going through a hoe phase... I mean, if you're going to bars and clubs and parties, like the likelihood that you're hooking up with a bunch of different dudes, mm -hmm. like, so you're ramping your body count up. So then that guy is going to like, is going to look at that and just be like, and maybe you're not, maybe you're just innocently going to bars and clubs and parties, but we know people hook up in these sort of sorts of environments. So you're going to be making yourself less appealing, less attractive to that guy that's going to come around. So... I don't know, man. Guys don't want like party chicks. Like to take seriously, we don't want party chicks. I don't want a chick who's ran through either. Yeah, body count. I don't count. want a party guy either. But you party. But you guys party. Why are you trying? Why party, are you trying to, to control his life? <laughs> <laughs> That's well. We're gonna we're gonna move on from no, this topic. I, I got something else. I got something else. <laughs> All right. So around the table, do you believe in astrology? Um. Yeah. I yeah. just know about mine, so yes. Yeah, I know about mine. Okay, but do you, and also, do you believe in astrology, and do you also ever use it to court, kind of suss out if this guy is a good match? Oh, he's a Virgo. <laughs> yeah, I've never used it towards a guy. Okay, but you, you believe in astrology. Okay, yeah. just do you believe in astrology? One million thousand percent no. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I definitely look at it because I think it's a different perspective. Whether or not it's true or not, I don't know. But I definitely do look at it. There are similarities that I find. Um, I don't personally like really believe or go deep into it, but I've been educated on it by people who who do believe into it 
and I've read up on it a little bit and I could see how I relate to my sign a little bit or how I have certain um, traits, but I'm not like a, I'm not dating him because he's a cancer type of into it. <laughs> I feel like everyone just can find something in astrology and just relate to every single sign. Like I've looked through, I'm an Aries. And I've also read like all the other ones, Libra and all the other shit. And like, you can always find one to relate to. So I don't believe in that at all. So astrology is an interesting one. Uh Oh, <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got two different things going on here. You got the astrologers. What's up? You got something to say? Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You got the astrologers that are telling white women what they want to hear and they're making boatloads of money off of it. Okay. That's, bullshit all of that that's nonsense they're just telling astrologers. they're telling women what they want to hear then you've also got a very real science of astrology and i've i've spent time looking into it a few years ago i was in a new age phase in terms of spirituality what do you mean science of astrology yeah oh. so so i didn't know there was such a thing yeah did you so, say astrologers what you put it down to what your you the, the chat is going to turn on you, Chase. Did you say astrology? I'm going right. to turn on you, that's, Chase. That's, that's, that's all right. I'm fine with it. I'm, well, and, and let me make the caveat. I don't think astrology is something that people should look deeply into, especially as a Christian. This, is, this falls under the umbrella of divination, people trying to do fortune telling. I don't think it's something that people should pursue. When I was less serious about my faith, I did look into it deeply because I knew a lot of people that were into it. Very smart people. I read my birth chart it was pretty mind blowing how accurate it was to me as a person. And it was the kind of thing where you could tell it wasn't an accident. It wasn't like, oh, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to find these traits. No, it was like a, a, a description of like my physical characteristics, what I look like, how I act, traumas that I've had in my life. It was very, very specific. Talked about health issues that I've had, very, very real stuff. There's, when I call it a science, there's a matrix of energies, and this is going to sound crazy to people. There's a matrix of energies in the universe that are organized by the planets, okay? And there's a lot to it, so. Eric, can you pull up the, the study that was done recently on astrology? All right, so this is the abstract. Belief in astrology is on the rise, although the reasons behind this are unclear. We tested whether individual personality traits could predict such, I can't pronounce that word, unfounded beliefs. Ooh, narcissism. Got Data was mind. collected for blah, 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 um, blah, blah, blah. Narcissism was surprisingly the strongest predictor and intelligence showed a negative relationship with belief in astrology. It's so over Oof. for me. Overall, our novel <laughs> I'm, results I'm a narcissistic suggest retard that something as innocent as astrology could both attract and possibly reinforce individual differences. Eric, if you can bring it back. Yeah, basically, I think that study says that people who believe in, astro in astrology are less intelligent. I mean, yeah, shot, shots fired. Shots I'll fired. I'll, I'll just say this, like, like four of my friends have looked at their birth charts and I have a buddy of mine who's, he's a student of the occult. He's studied Freemasonry. He's studied all sorts of stuff. And uh, of the four or five of my friends that have done their, their birth charts, they are almost pinpoint accurate for each of my friends and their individual personality traits, and it's not an accident. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it. Good times. Uh, let me get some super chats, and we'll go into our next question here. Did you have Did, something you wanted to say, I, Tara? Quick thing, real quick yeah, thing. So I came to UCSB for, for, um, to study physics here. So I have mainly a physics background. So I'm just going to say from the physics side, I just cannot ever associate myself with astrology it is just pretty antithetical to science to me and then also on the psychology side now that's my main major now i've also you know read some papers on um the psychology behind belief in astrology similar to that one and one of them being like a common thing you'll run into is confirmation bias so you're you're gonna believe and remember the things that are correct and you're just by your like nature not gonna pick up or like care about the things that don't align so just two things. Um, okay, so in response I'm just to saying, that, yeah. this is why I say that astrologers who sell bullshit to white women is definitely a thing because of the confirmation bias that you're describing. Mm -hmm. You just alluded a second ago to the idea that the planetary bodies have no impact on our behavior, on our personalities, anything like that. Do you think that's true? That they have, there, there's no impact on, on human behavior, the stuff in the solar system. Do you think that's true? I mean, that's pretty broad i'm gonna go with a no there but um yeah okay so 
I you, just wanted to ask that question so I could dunk on everyone with the study. <laughs> I, but you never, I just, never did the buzzer button. I, just, I was waiting for that. I really, there's, there's this an is important, like the most boring conversation. Like well, astrology is just boring. I, I, I want to vindicate myself. Give me 20 seconds. The term, I don't want to think you're a stupid narcissist. I want to. I want to. I want. I want there to be hope there. So please persuade me. I, I would hope that study didn't just convince you that no, I'm a okay. stupid narcissist. But uh, human behavior is directly correlated with the lunar cycle. Okay, so the term lunatic comes from the fact that people act erratically around full moons. Mm. Crime rates worldwide skyrocket with every full moon. This is a, a known and studied phenomenon. Well, isn't that because it's brighter out? Because of the moon? Thus, yeah, that's my first thought there. You think that people are, are committing increasing crimes, women's cycles are affected by the lunar cycle? You think all well, that's the, just the, because, because well, the moon out. is brighter? Well, it, because it's brighter, but also if the moon is visible, that would also suggest that it, there's clearer skies. So temperature is, a, is related to criminality also. The, if it's cold, people are staying inside. They're less likely to be out fucking doing crime and shit. They've yeah. done studies I on, mean, like... I mean, our bodies are, like, yeah, what, 75% water, and the moon affects the tides. It affects all of the water on the planet. Babe. I'd be surprised if it doesn't affect us in some way. And I, I, don't, I don't think it being bright out changes <laughs> worldwide behavior. You know, I'll have to look way. into it, but we'll, thank you yeah, for we'll inspiring me. I'm going to we'll, look we'll into have that. To, we'll have to look at the study, but let's get some Super Chats, and then we'll get into our next question. Dave on Jackson, thank you for the $10 Super Chat. If she looks like a 304, associates with the 304s, and goes where the 304s go, then she most likely a 304. Sorry, not sorry. Ha hashtag, sorry, not sorry. Also, Aries game. Hey, oh, let's go. Shit. Okay. Dave on Jackson, thank you for the $10 super chat. Facts, man, facts. Um, Christian Kane with the $10 super chat. What they need to realize is that most men don't ask for much in their woman. On the other hand, they have a long laundry list of qualifications for a man, and you can't even stay out of the club. Shaking my head. It's a fact. Christian Kane, thank you for the $10 super chat. I think that's the first time I've seen you, man. Welcome. Uh, so we've, I think we kind of beat a dead horse with the club thing maybe we go back there later but um let's see last one here we got dave on jackson with the ten dollar super chat i learned astrology pur purely for women i don't believe in it but i learned which signs are compatible to know which birthdays to say for for a long time okay so he's basically just changing it i guess changing up his sign just telling women what they want to hear so they fall in love with him fucking top g <laughs> over here fucking lad you probably text them at 10, 11 11 too probably <laughs> you know what manufacturing synchronicities right. <laughs> oh shit we got mike davis back can we get where, where's his vigil can we get his vigil where's his vigil yeah let's put it on the table let's let's just put it on the table there for just a sec mike davis can you at least finally address the vigil good sir can you please address it <laughs> you refuse to comment on the vigil here can you go uh, center eric or uh, center zoom there we go boom address it mike davis um okay the only two people that belonged in astrology are non-religious women desperate for an identity and culture usually white and men trying to pick them up okay uh word yep that's true please address the vigil please mike davis okay notice me senpai okay um yeah we're not gonna pull that super chat up wait the huh 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 Huh. Huh. Hmm. All right, next question. We got a, guys. We got a video to react to. Chase is gonna love this one. Let's I think. go. I think maybe. I don't. I don't know why I even said that. But okay. <laughs> so, Eric, can you pull up the uh, first video, really? Hey, bestie. <laughs> oh, God. You're wrong. I think it's time for another adult pre-K lesson. What do you think? Obviously. All right, turn your listening ears on. Catch a bubble in your mouth. Good job. Okay, here's the thing. Having a preference is something like, I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking or wakes up early in the morning or loves pizza. <laughs> But when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. Okay, that's not nice. That's not a preference. If you lump all fat people in one group together as though they are not very different individuals, that's fat phobic. Just like lumping all black people in one group and saying, I don't like black people is racist. And lumping all disabled people in one group and saying, 
I don't think people in wheelchairs are hot, is ableist. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that's bullshit. That really that's bullshit. To listen to. That, that's so different than hating a group, a racist group. That's just preference. That's just the fact that men don't want fat women. I mean... Do you yeah. guys do you guys think it's fat phobic? Like, do you think it's fat phobic to have preferences about whether or not you want to date a fat person? That's so mean to say like guys just don't want fat women. That's the I truth. Mean, I mean, speaking, maybe like fat men so want fat. Women. Generally speaking, very few of us want fat women. What what women want fat men? I mean, it's like I don't know. I, uh, Let's say you had the option, Lauren, between a super jacked Chad <laughs> and an ultra fat dude. Which one are you? Okay, picking? well, it's like. Per it's personal preference. Exactly. That's just, oh, Do you think it's mean that guys so have personal mean. preferences too? But I feel like you're just saying that about all men in general. Saying what? Like all men don't want. No, no. I mean, I think that some men like that probably. I'm sure those, those people out there, but like for the most part, we're not looking for that. Um, like, especially a guy who puts an effort in himself. I'm going to have no opinion on this. What do you guys think about what she said? What do you guys think? I have a pretty controversial opinion. I love controversy. I Let's it's hear it. It's not anything like original, you know, a lot of like, I don't know, other podcasters say it, but um, like that body positivity is a harmful public service announcement if it's um, discouraging prioritizing your health. So basically, like encouraging people to think like fat is beautiful. Fat is like incredibly unhealthy, leads to the number one causes of death in America. And yeah, it's a terrible thing. We should not be encouraging in any capacity. You are so, so fat phobic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm because I'm, I'm like because I'm like health, I'm like pro health. I think health is if, if it's not your priority, if it's not your number one priority, maybe reconsider that. Maybe like consider making it your number one priority. And um yeah, I don't think as a culture we should be, like, I'm not saying, like, bully people for their weight, but don't, but maybe don't have a culture that's shaming, like, discouraging people from prioritizing their health and taking totally care of their bodies. I totally agree, yeah. <laughs> so I think there's a balance there because I do have friends that are larger, and it's, it is genetics. No matter what they, no, listen, they, they do the diets, they do the stuff, they lose a lot of the weight, but there's some weight that's very difficult for them to lose, even though they're continuously working on it, right? It's, it's a continuous um, effort to work on yourself. So I don't think that we should marginalize what, people. What? But I also think that everybody has their own preferences on what they're attracted but, to. And if you're looking for a partner. People, like, aren't the most healthy too. There, yeah, there are people exactly. who are anorexic. Why in yeah. the U.S. though, the U.S. has the fattest people. And <laughs> it, you know, like this can't just be, I, I do believe that genetics play a role. That's for sure. That's true. But why in the U.S. is it that it's just okay here? It's just. Are we, are we continuing the, bo the body positivity concept? Because I think that there is a certain aspect to that culture where it is overdone and we are encouraging people yeah. to be unhealthy. But right. I, I, my understanding was the question was the um, intent and preferences in your partners. So is that mm. the discussion or is the discussion the body positivity? What's Which the would you prefer? Right would you prefer a man who's in shape or a man who's fat? I prefer a man who's actively taking care of himself. Yeah. Whatever that looks like, okay. as long Both as they're doing the work. Both men are attempting to actively take care of themselves. Both of their personalities, incomes, level of commitment to you are almost equivalent. Would you prefer the man who's in shape or the man who's fat? It depends on who I'm more attracted to physically. Your attraction is almost identical to both of them with everything other than the level of fitness that they have. Then it comes down to their personality. Personalities are equivalent. Would you prefer an in-shape man, shredded six-pack, Dude looks like Brad Pitt in Fight Club, okay? Or would you prefer a morbidly obese dude? So those are two polar opposites. So if someone if someone is morbidly obese, they're not working on themselves. He literally can't even walk. Then that's someone who's not <laughs> yeah, taking care of himself. Yeah, that's someone who's about to be on like, like my That's not <laughs> even valid I know, in the it's, conversation. It's a ridiculous question. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, I just I think. Almost everybody would choose a person who's in shape. I think people have that preference. I don't think it's. I think phobic. if you don't have that preference, you're like 
con- severely confused. I don't know. If you're, yeah, if, you, if you're not prioritizing your partner, they take care of their health and they prioritize their health, you need to look for different quality people. Yeah. So wait, what was your kind of quarrel with what I think Michael, right? Yeah. What Michael was saying. Wait, what was that? What, 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 was what were you saying before? You were saying that it's fat phobic what, what were you oh, saying I didn't say anything about just because i was fat phobia I think. you're saying it's wrong that guys don't want to date fat women okay are you imitating me okay yes oh. i am sorry just just because <laughs> i i stepped i stepped away for a second just so what was it that you said i don't know i honestly don't she just said it was wrong. mean that was all it's mean said. that guys what's prefer, mean what is mean it's mean guys prefer women who are in shape over women who what are is mean i would just say that it shouldn't all be about like okay looks no, not about that. I mean, I feel like everything should factor equally. Didn't, didn't you say earlier in the conversation you that, like okay. guys that are jacked? No, I never said you that. You didn't say I that? Oh, no, you just that. said like tall, dark, handsome, that kind of stuff. I never said okay, I think you, you said, asked me what my type was. Yeah, you said it was mostly physical for you, okay, not even personality. No. <laughs> but what if physical for me meant like it doesn't? he doesn't have to be shredded? I never said that okay. my type was a guy who's shredded. I, you're right. I got that wrong. I never said so that. So what, what do you look for? She likes fat dudes. Fat. <laughs> but okay, what what is your issue? I guess okay, we watched the video. I don't like someone who's obese. Mean if Honestly, girls, I like, like someone who is like into self care. Someone who just gives a shit. But okay, about so the like minded. The video is yeah. the video is a morbidly obese woman complaining that I'm not saying okay, morbidly obese. Hold on, let me finish. I let me finish. Yeah, let the, me finish. The, the video is a woman who's morbidly obese who's trying to paint the narrative that it's somehow discriminatory or like fat phobic or just some sort of like marginalization that men don't want to date fat obese women. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have an issue with men that don't want to date fat obese women? Do you think that's wrong of men to have that preference that they'd prefer to date women who are not fat? <laughs> I don't know, I guess everyone can have their preferences. Okay, fair. Okay. Yeah, but I will say that. But I feel like there was a but. No, I'll just say everyone can have their preferences. Everyone has their preferences. Okay, but do you do you think that that is an unjustified preference that men I have? I just think you shouldn't base everything on that. On what? On like, okay, you look at someone, they're like, I guess morbidly oh, obese. Okay. <laughs> I mean, her personality is dog shit too. Yeah. Okay, She's condescending. In that case, in yeah. that, okay, in that case, I would say yeah. No, I, I wouldn't want to go for someone who's morbidly obese and has a dog shit personality. <laughs> but, um, you know, if they're morbidly obese, I mean, okay, I'm not talking about morbidly obese. I'm saying someone, okay, maybe they have like a couple extra pounds. They treat me like a queen. Like, I really like them. They have a great personality. We get along. I'm not going to hold those extra pounds against them. But okay, but she's she's morbidly obese. I think she's talking about like women who you would... If a woman has a little bit of a little little belly, like a little uh, couple extra pounds, like you said, I don't. Most guys, that's probably fine. In fact, most men yeah, like that's what I'm like referring th- to. Thick, thick but women. But you never said like morbidly obese from the. From yeah, but the she's dump. she's morbidly obese and she's complaining about. I, I didn't. I don't remember the exact words, but. <laughs> okay, I got I got a good. I don't want someone who's you. unhealthy. Right. Like morbidly obese. Right. <laughs> I, I, I got a good question. So, so earlier when you were describing your type, you said, was it, you like tall guys? <laughs> I don't say, think I ever even said tall. Okay, so no tall, but you like dark features. Oh, okay, yeah. What, what, el- what, else, what else did you say? Um, I think I just said like brown eyes and brown hair. Okay, brown That's eyes and I brown meant. hair. What would you say if a guy made a video and he was like, I think it's so wrong that women have preferences only for guys with brown eyes and brown hair. I think that's discriminatory. I think you're marginalizing guys with blonde hair and blue eyes. And I think it's wrong that there are girls out there like you. What would you say to a guy like that? Well, you know, when you asked me that, I wasn't saying, oh, that's only like exclusively. I'd only go for guys with like brown hair and brown eyes. I was just saying it, it was something I, it was like a type of mine. But at the end of the day, I think it comes more down to like, who you get along with. You can't really control who you like. But do you think that men should care less about a woman's weight? Is I think that's the crux of Do you like do you like short guys? <laughs> I mean, I'm short, so do you, like let's say a guy was 5 foot, would you date him? 
I prefer not to, but let's say he really treats me well and we really get along and I really like him. You would date him? Yeah, okay. I would. So. And, and, you know, <laughs> on, such a good on that note, that. I actually want to make I want to make a point, though, to guys that are short, that that is zero. There's zero reason to give up if you're a short man. The short kings. Yeah, I mean, that persevere. No reason that, to give up. There's no reason to give short up. Short kings and, rise up. <laughs> that's right. And make make tau men going their own way. That's that's some BS, man. You got to You got to learn how to get past that and work on yourself and got, still got, become man. just because girls say that right now like you can still prove yourself you can still become a high value man if you're short if you're fat, like you, you work on yourself short kings yeah build yourselves in the gym build your sense of humor build your sense of confidence build your social status build your career build all these things get that charisma that fire of confidence inside of you you guys can pull most women that you want women say that they prefer tall guys you get an ultra charismatic short king around they'll flock to him i've seen it happen i like a guy who can make me laugh and then still get curved by the girl who wants a guy who's 6'3". Okay, so, um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, obviously improve yourself, but uh, yes, men who are shorter do, uh, do definitely face a added challenge when it comes to dating. So, okay, did anyone else want to come in on the reaction to the video? You didn't really, do you want to give your take? I don't think you no, spoke on it yet. I really agree with Lauren pretty much but oh yeah I think that like body positivity is more popularized these days I guess um yeah but I'm personally attracted to physical looks first but I yeah I don't know what to say I really liked your take Tara I thought you had a very good take on it thank you, you it's kind of comment? it's kind of funny though I like did. how Women can reject men for damn near nothing, but can get completely butthurt and have to mega cope when they get rejected by men. So they have to make TikTok videos talking about how all men need to change. It's just I, I think women get off to rejecting men. I just saw a video on that. I think every time a man comes to you and you reject him, there's a little dopamine hit and you love it. I can I validate that. Really? I can validate that. Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's true. Yeah. That's okay. not been like. I don't know. It's probably Wait, what, what, I don't know. Probably my friends, you feel really do. terrible. I don't know. Me and like other people I know. But. Say it again. So I, so I believe that women, many women get, they get sort of, they get off to it a little bit. They like when men approach them and they, they just say no and they just look away and just mm. blow them off. You, th you, my you think they, they like the, I think they like, I think they the get a hit of dope. It's validation. And, it's attention. And, and possibly also a feeling of power. Like I just rejected. Absolutely. It's a total power trip. Absolutely. Okay. It's a complete power, power trip. Oh, I yeah. don't think that's always the case. Yeah. Like, it's probably a case by case basis. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but I, I wouldn't even say that's like majority of the case. I think most times it's like girls feel really bad. They're like, what do I say to him? I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I'm just like not into it. Like, I feel like most of the times girls like, keep seeing guys that they don't like because they're they they like don't hurt their feelings mm. at least that's my experience but yeah well, what do you think it goes i think that it goes both ways it depends on the females but i can validate yeah. that there are females out there yeah. that totally like right. they go out to the clubs just so exactly. they can say no yeah what do you think Liv? um i think for me it's a case by case like if a guy walks up to me with like a fat ego and it feels nice to reject him a little bit because you know take it down but if he's a super nice guy and he genuinely wants to take me out and i'm just like not feeling it i'll be like i'm sorry like no but i really haven't like i feel like i really haven't rejected anybody in person either i've only re rejected over dms yeah like dms texts because they come in like really rude about it that's when the ego comes in and it's like no how often do you guys hit on you in person these days? Ooh, that's a good question. Never. Uh, <laughs> never. Never. I've been told I'm very intimidating, and so I don't get approached very Do you often. wish guys came up to you more? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, you'd provide more opportunity. I just said I'm only free on Tuesdays, so if you see me at the grocery <laughs> store, you know. <laughs> Dude, what about you're, you guys? Wait, you're only free on Tuesdays? Yes. So I'm if a guy, like, let's say you've been dating a guy for three months, yeah. still only free Tuesdays? I mean, if my daughter goes on a sleepover or hangs out with her friends, it goes to her friend's house, then mm -hmm. sure. But I have my daughter 24-7. Yeah, we'll, we will get to your question, by yeah. the way. Wait, so then, I mean, 
don't you think that this is just another like if a guy had a choice between dating a woman who's only free on Tuesdays versus dating a woman whose her schedule's pretty wide open mm -hmm. that's oh, another detractor i have less of a chance absolutely but you just asked if i wish that guys would approach me more yeah, yeah, yeah. so they don't know that they don't know i'm only sure. free on tuesdays and they just see me around sure okay um rest of the girls you want to answer his question this guy and his fucking scooter, man. This <laughs> fucking scooter guys, man. Um, I guess in terms of rejection, we often, going back to the club scene, <laughs> a guy will buy us a drink, and you know, ladies tend to use men for, you know, a drink. Yep. We might run yeah. away. I guess that's um, a form of rejection, but yeah. I don't know if that has to do with ego. or like, oh, he thinks we're cute. Let's get a drink from him. And then like, F him. Let's run away really quick because he's not our type. He's, you know, whatever. I wonder just on that drink thing really quick. And I don't know if this is really a thing. Maybe I'm reaching here. But do you think that, Chase, maybe one of the reasons that men might, one of the other reasons why men might have an issue with a woman going to a club is that men are going to be buying them drinks. And that's almost fulfilling the provider role in a way. And it's like, Maybe I'm like kind of grasping here, but I think you're projecting a little bit with the provider thing. Unless a guy is like balling out, ordering them really expensive liquor in an effort to show off, then a woman might be like, "Ooh, this guy has money." I would consider it like crossing the line of cheating. If you, I think like it's not just. I don't think it's necessarily. I don't think it's cheating if a girl goes out to a bar, but I do think if she accepts a drink from a guy, it's like Such kind of crossing flag. the boundary of cheating. Yeah. So. Yep. I mean, some guys like it. You're, 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 That's a good you're point. You're inviting the attention. I mean, yeah, you're that inviting. literally says that. I mean, I would, I consider that like a. You haven't. You, you haven't. I'm accepting your yeah. like bid. I don't know. Mm. Offer Anyways, um, you guys answer uh, his question. Can I just say one thing too? I sure. This might be very controversial. Do it. But um, be, be controversial. <laughs> if a if a girl is hitting on the guy that I, if a girl if a girl is hitting on a guy that I'm dating like honestly I don't care because I see it as a compliment I'm dating a guy that's attractive. Girls don't hit on men. Generally mm. speaking, she's making, but she's I'm making actually a good point though. From experience, so um, yeah, that might just be me. But you're, that, you're no, I I, you know, I think a lot of women probably feel the same way because yeah. women women yeah. want guys that other women want. Yes. Mm -hmm. It validates. Exactly. It's like, yeah. I really don't care. Yeah. Like, a million girls come up. Like, and also, I think I have a lot of trust in my partners. I'll, well, I'll so. say this real quick on that. This is a really important point, especially for the dudes out there that are trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in the dating world. If a girl is with a guy and she sees a lot of women want him, that's going to make him very attractive to her. Exactly. That's why when, when, guys, when guys go out with, with their girl or with, with another girl, he, automatically they're going to get way more female attention way more female attention because it's a pre-approval thing it's pre approval have, guys are not the same way no. have, have you guys ever known a guy and like maybe he hit on you and like you weren't really that into him and then he got a girlfriend and she was attractive and it changed kind of the way that you looked mm -hmm. at him has that ever happened mm -hmm. no oh uh, yeah all the time that's what happened to my lucky ex-boyfriend i am like convinced of it there's something called like the Pete Davidson effect. I don't know. That's what I call it. But like if a beautiful, <laughs> stunning girl is dating a mid guy, you know, like nothing like amazing, he is the hottest thing that's ever happened mm. in this town. Right. Men, listen to this. Yeah. I kind of do agree women, with that. Women need their <laughs> female counterparts they to, to co-sign. Yeah. 1000%. Like men, we don't need to go to our guy friends and be like, oh, do you think, what do you think about her? Like, no, nah, we don't need that. But like women will ask their fucking girlfriends or if it's just already, you know, there's a situation like you guys described where the guy's getting hit on then. Speaking of which, tip for all the dudes out there that want to become better with women. If you start talking to a girl and she introduces you to her friend group, if you can charm her friend group and make them like you, it will make you so much more attractive and likable to her. How do you feel if you're dating a girl and then all of a sudden all your homies like think she's really attractive? How do you feel about it? I mean, what? I want to be like, yo, like, back off. I know she's hot, but back the fuck off. Okay. That'd be weird if, it, if yeah. a dude, like a guy friend was like saying that. I mean, I, I, I mean, if, if he's, well, if he complimenting. Not saying it in that way, but like if your friends think your girlfriend's pretty. There's a bro code. 
there's a bro code, right? Okay. Yeah. And like, let's say I start dating a girl and he's like talking to me about how hot she is and stuff. Like, there's a point where it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Th like, thanks, bro. I know. Yeah, like, right, like right. and he's going to be like, yo, like, great job, dude. Right? Exactly. Okay. But if he fixates on it, it's like, yo, the fuck's like, going on with you, dude? dude. You know, yeah. like, w what's, what's this obsession you have? Yeah. When I was in college, th there was this, uh, this girl that came around my friend group of guys, and we all thought she was super hot. But one of my buddies started dating her, and all of the rest of us, like, backed the fuck off. That's what guys are supposed to do, mm -hmm. you know? Huge cause con for concern. If Where, whereas most girls, it's like you, you want to show them off, right? You want to be like, hey, like, look at this is my guy. Like, if you mm -hmm. if you get with that high value man, you're showing him off. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna your girls to like be anyone. You're if you're dating them, you probably would think they're high value. I'm gonna do some super chats here. We got Mr. Mike. That's a good point. Mike Davis with the ten dollars super chat. The only two people that belonged in astrology are non-religious women desperate for an identity and culture, usually white. Oh wait, we already did we this did one. That my one. bad. Okay. Elder Scrolls with the $10 soup chat. She's a 10, but she still eats seed oils. Yes, dude. Elder Scrolls based, bro. Seed what? oils are one of the, the biggest, biggest problems in the Western world right now. It's actually mm. why so many people in America are obese. Mm. Mm. If you guys, can I bring up this point as a tangent for seed oils? It's related to dating. What's up? So if you know, if you know what's up with seed oils, you probably know what's up with like women's hormonal birth control. You know, you got to cut that out too. So one of my beefs with feminism is that telling young girls that hookup culture is good for them and empowering to them makes them ju just more dependent on birth control. And yeah. And but. to add on top of that, birth control affects women's fertility long term. There's yeah, a, yeah. There's a lot there's, of women. I mean, there's a million reasons to like not be. I mean, there's reasons to be on it. I don't want to like go crazy on birth control, but that's just related. Like that's just a beef with feminism. It makes you more dependent on taking a pill every day of your life since you're 16. That's crazy. And it, it causes nutrient affects deficiencies, affects their fertility things. long term. You know what the fucked up part about it is? Nobody when they're young gets taught about the fertility method of not getting pregnant. Yeah, you know what girls don't know? Only five days, let me know if any of you guys knew this, but there's only five days of your menstrual cycle where you can actually conceive. The other 25 days, there's no chance of you getting pregnant. Oh, yeah. You cannot get pregnant. You knew that. Did you guys know yeah, that? Yeah, I knew that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that until like last year. Yeah, it's your mm -hmm. like, for, it's your, um, which it's made like me a little feel window. so dumb. Yeah. That's why when women get older, they literally tell their husband or whoever they're with, we have to do it tonight at this time because that's when I'm like the most fertile. That's literally a thing. It's three days before and after ovulation or something, right? It's the five days in, up to and including the day of ovulation. Okay. Yeah. Tara Peterson giving a lecture again. Okay. Yeah, it's based Sorry. though. Women, Wait, women what? need to know that. Yo, but yeah. what about the copper the IUD? Copper IUD, that's non hormonal. It's still There's so many object. complications. Yeah, I don't want a piece of metal in my it's body for what? So I can have yeah. like more, more meaningless IUD sex. My mom is a fun. well, my mom's a nurse and she's she was a Dell room nurse for a while, like delivery room. And um, she actually delivered a baby two years ago to teen parents that came out holding the IUD. Mm -hmm. Like Holy literally shit. was born with the IUD in its hand. You still get pregnant. What? Yes. Yeah. Good it was times. a big fuck you to the mom and dad, but like, you know, it's That's just you crazy. have to. Good times. Mm -hmm. Okay, the more you know. Dave Von Jackson with the $10 super, ch super chat. Being obese shows a lack of discipline, so you tend to question other habits they may have. Very good point. The people the one lady was referring to that put in effort and don't see results are a small minority. Yeah, that's a really good point because I mean, if someone's overweight, someone's fat, someone's obese, that points to, uh, I think, a character defect or a character flaw. They're not, you know, taking care of their health. What other bad habits do they have? You know, so Mike Davis with the ten dollars soup chat. If Blondie thinks men are being hard on the fatties, I'll give her a lifetime free pass mm -hmm. to double whoppers, so she can be a real ally and support her fat ass sisters in their struggle. Mike I, Mike Davis is the goat. I just dude. eat what I want to eat, like and. It's he by the way he owns like, I think he's actually just recently he's he's acquired a couple of other chains of Burger King. He said he didn't own Burger Kings. He owned other things. No, he them. trust he's, he's definitely owned some Burger Kings. Oh, okay. He for sure owns Burger King. Some Kings. people are super skinny and they're not healthy either. So, yeah. 
He's he w- used to be in the subway business, but you know after the chair thing. Did you just want me to eat a bunch of burgers so I can give him money? Did you talk last time you were on about how birth control affects women's interest in men? I didn't talk about that. I went like really into specifics about how different um, like differences on the menstrual like where you are like in the menstrual cycle will and affect the types of men. men women are but yeah, but that was for women not not on birth control. Right. I don't know what it's like for. Were you saying were, were you saying that when women are closer to ovulation, they perform more like alpha male Chadley yeah. traits? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. They prioritize physical attractiveness over. Have you seen the literature on birth control and female attraction and how it changes it? Yeah, I've seen some of it. Some of it, yeah. It's pretty crazy shit. What is it? So are the women more masculine? Dude, so women, on average, on birth control, prefer men with more, quote-unquote, like, beta features yeah. mm-hmm. and more, like, feminine features. Yeah. And mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. off birth control prefer men with more masculine features. Interesting. I have to say this is really interesting as a person who's been on, on average, birth control since all. high school. Gotcha. You, do you agree you or don't. disagree? I think it's situational. Okay. But, um, you know, I can say that I definitely don't prefer a more feminine male. Uh-huh. I can say that it does affect, you know, my hormones and my overall Does, does it affect my pheromones? Body. The pheromones? Big time. It okay. affects it big time. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They did another study. Women who were on birth control. So, so through pheromones, people can detect the immune system of like a partner and whether or not their immune system is compatible with the other yeah. person's immune system. Women off birth control are better able to detect a man who has a complementary immune system to their own. Mm-hmm. Women who are on birth control have a much harder time detecting pheromonally a man's immune system and whether or not it's complementary. It like totally scrambles the wires. They can't they can't smell which men are complementary to them. Mm. Maybe that's my problem. Could be. <laughs> Let me go back to the super chats here. Davon Jackson with the ten dollars super chat. I have no sympathy for women who are disqualified for the decisions they make. Weight, going out, single moms, etc. Who disqualify men for how they were born? Okay, so are you talk, Davon? Are you talking about like height? That's what I suspect. I have no sympathy for women who are disqualified for the decisions they make. Weight, going out, single moms, etc. Who disqualify men for how they were born? That's probably. I mean, that could be that could be height. That could be peen size. That could be. If they they're balding, you know, men have a male p- pattern baldness. You know, some guys get it even in starting in high school. So, Dave, on thank you for the ten dollars super chat. Green Lantern with the nine uh, British pounds, I believe. Would you date a bi man for the guys? Would you date a bi girl? We'll go around the table really quick on this. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. You date a guy who's bi. Yeah. Okay, a guy who yeah. sleeps with men. Um, I a- mean, I'd rather we be in a. I'd rather um, an exclusive dating relationship. Like, I wouldn't want him to be sleeping with other guys. Is that what you were saying? Well, no, it's just, I mean, let's say a week before you hook up with a guy, he was bottomed out by a dude, just bent over on the bed and just... <laughs> just rammed. Just <laughs> rammed. I really just, I don't have a preference on that. BBC? Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> no, I don't have a preference on that. For four years prior to you don't care. You, for four years prior to meeting you, he'd only <laughs> been taking it from dudes, and then he was like, "You don't know okay, what I like." You. I personally <laughs> like a bi man. I like like guys are kind of femme. Like, Me too. Guy. That's yeah. one of my types. I think for it's hard. Sure. Are you guys? On I think birth they control? know what they're doing. <laughs> are you guys? On, are you guys on birth control? No, oh. I am, okay. and I like bi men. Okay. I like I like femme men. Can you explain yeah, that? Like when you say you like femme men, like what? Like a girl, they're more but artsy. Pretty. They can. Are you attracted? Not judge like you're more attracted, or sometimes. I think girls. Are you? Are you? Are, do you, are you into girls? Sometimes. sometimes. Okay. Well, that there we go. I mean, <laughs> have you guys ever hooked up? No. <laughs> no, we're just we're best friends. Okay. Okay. Said okay. package deal. Both interested in girls. Figured maybe. Definitely had a lot yeah. of guys like. Want us both at the same yeah. time, <laughs> for like sure. But I think bi men have you, have you are more that? down to earth. I'm about to be a really lucky guy. But you haven't done that. No. A lot of propositions. Yeah, that's some top secret info. Would you would you date a bi guy? It's a definite no. That's a no for me. No. Hold on, Kiki. Ew, a no. Okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, most oh, likely. Would you no. date a bi girl? No, probably not. I mean, it's, it's possible, probably not. Okay. Chase. 
I'd, I'd date a bi girl. I'd date a bi girl. I, I, just, like I just feel like there's more, there's more like potential though. for risk there. I, I think don't know. guys yeah. sometimes yeah. find bi women more attractive. Like they want, guys find it when girls are making out, hooking up, they get turned on and think yeah. it's attractive. From what I've seen from personal experience. Yeah. A lot of my friends yeah. find that hot. It's yeah. true, but it's just, the, it's just them being bi. It's like, I, it's just, there's something about it. It's like, you're kind of more likely to potentially sleep with an, another man too. But it's just also like a, a difference. Like with girls, it's like girls kiss girls. It's like so chill. But like with guys, I feel like there's a different. Most that's true. Like you. Yeah. I mean, but I, I think if we're talking about that, that's no big deal. But if, if it's like, if she's actively dating like other girls, it'd be kind of like, that's kind of weird. Like, I don't, don't think I would want that. Oh. If she's like actively, like if she's just hooking up with another girl, like sure. But if she's dating other girls, it's like probably not. Are you just saying that to be controversial, or like you actually think? No, that? no, no. I like I wouldn't want like a girl that's da- that's actively dating other girls, most likely. You mean like actively dating like you guys? She's dating someone when you're dating her, or just like in general? Like when I'm dating her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. But well, even you mean fair. you mean or even in the early stages you wouldn't want to be dating a woman who's dating other. It's just women. like because I think about it in, in terms of marriage. So it's like when I think about dating a girl or being with a girl, it's like I'm thinking about marriage. So if the girl is like hooking up with other girls, it's like I'll view her as a, maybe a potential partner for like a one night stand or something. But I don't really take that. I don't take that as marriage material. Why wouldn't you three d- date by guys? Does Kiki go first? <laughs> um, I think that it's more risk um, as far as, you know, the temptation. You know, it's, it's double the probability that they're going to stray away from your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's just a turn off. I don't know how I can, like, imagine, like, the guy, a guy I'm supposed to be having sex with, like, just like you know, I dude. just simply don't understand how that just is, wouldn't be attractive. Mm. That would just be like yeah. an instant turn off. Maybe maybe I can also frame it this way: Would you guys be down to peg a guy? What is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> you would not be down to peg a guy. Oh my god. No. Why not? So discriminatory. Because that doesn't turn me on. It doesn't. T- what if it turns him on? I don't care. <laughs> but but would it be a turn off for you? I'm, I'm trying to get at something. Would it be a turnoff yeah. for you to peg a guy? Would it be a turnoff for you? Kind of. Because that's like not... What? What? what is, it's a fair question. I mean, this, is, you can not, say, this is like such a different subject. It's like one is okay if we're into bi people and the other one is like what we like in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing. What, well, it's, it's, so, it's such a ridiculous oh, question. It's yeah, related. It really it's it's related. It's so easy. It's so easy to admit. Yeah, it's a turnoff. I don't want to peg a dude. But, okay, and then you also ask, oh, is dating a bi guy like are we into that or not? I don't That's care. Different. But uh, yeah, personally, we're in the bedroom. This is a different conversation. Oh I'm not down to peg a guy. That's different. So That's fair. fine. That's fair. totally I don't fine. That's a, good, that's a good answer. So but, do you think? Would, do you think if you're dating someone who's bisexual? <laughs> that they're not going to want you to participate in some of those That's acts. not where I was going. I mean, that's a fair no. question. That's a fair question. That is fair. But but the point I'm trying to make is, is that it would kind of be putting you in a role where you would be dominating the guy and you would find that unattractive to be dominating him in that that's way. That's so different. It's like, are you into being dominated or being like... That's Anyway, okay, whatever. Next super chat here. Yeah. We got Jordan Huber here with the $10 super chat. Why is it when men have standards, it's controlling or insecure, but if women have standards, it's knowing their self-worth or what they want? That's a great question. That, that's actually a very Boom. fantastic point. Boom. Live? Oh, live. Live, what's up? You're really pretty knowledgeable. Jordan Huber, thank you for the $10 thank super chat. So that is a fantastic point, though, because uh, definitely... Men in today's day and age are not allowed to have preferences, standards, and boundaries. When we do and when we voice them, it's almost always met with contempt or some sort of shaming language or you're, you're insecure, you're an incel, you're a misogynist, just some sort of shaming language. Men are not 
women apparently have a monopoly on having preferences, standards, and boundaries. The second that the man has one, oh, that's discrimination. Or, you know, one of these shaming terms. So Controlling. It's always controlling. Controlling, insecure, small dick energy, blah, blah, blah. What I think that is is a cultural conditioning that's happening societally to demasculinize men and break up the family home. Yeah. That's Yo. exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. They are trying to destroy the nuclear family. That's they are. The nuclear true. family yeah. is the strongest, so that's where they're going to get us. Yep. Damn, based. What a legend. Your name's Ashley, right? Correct. Ashley the legend. <laughs> Ashley the... Okay, anyways. Um, so that's it for the Super Chats. On to our next topic. Okay, so... Would you rather find out your boyfriend spent $5,000 on a sex doll... Or that he cheated on you with a girl who's uglier than you? What a great question. Oh my God. How much money do we have in the bank is the question. He's like seven, maybe 70K a year type of guy. <laughs> Liv, we'll start with you. Go ahead, Liv. I was just gonna ask, is he, is he fucking this ugly girl over and over? Just like he would do with the doll? No. Th well, I think it's like probably a... I don't know. I didn't think the, the, the question that far through. Let's just say he's cheating on you. Okay, so it's like an affair. One let's night say, stand. Yeah, maybe let's one just say he did it once. Okay, one night stand versus the sex doll? Versus the sex doll. It um, costs $5,000. I mean, <laughs> if we have money in the bank, I guess I'd rather find out he bought a sex doll rather than going with a whole nother girl but then again if the girl's ugly it might be a confidence boost isn't that me? like so sad though wouldn't it's, you just be so know, sad i don't know how i would answer that because yeah. that's such a weird question obviously i'd want to find out he bought a sex doll over that he cheated i don't know Let me five thousand dollars you like he just spends five thousand dollars to have sex with a doll over like a real person then yeah i'd probably rather have him cheat Right. With like an ugly girl, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Keep it, keep it up, Eric. I'm Why is that? Is that because it would be pathetic for him to be having sex with a doll, spending way too much money on it? It's just. Also, what conversation did I just step in? That's yeah, what I'm saying. You missed a good I one. I think I would rather. Yeah, I'd probably rather find out he's cheating with an ugly girl because it's like, one, she can have you. Two, you know, no, no money out of my pocket. So. Or our bank account. So he spent your money on the doll. Oh, I'd be pissed. Yeah, then okay. the ugly girl. I want to wait for my next question until she's back. We'll we'll skip this sex <laughs> all along. It's kind of dumb. What was the um, What was the question? How, how did it get to that? If point? you had to choose, would you rather your boyfriend cheat on you? Or sorry, if you had to choose, would you rather find out your boyfriend spent five thousand dollars on a sex doll, or that he cheated on you with a girl who's uglier than you? I've got I've got a better one. What were your answers? We didn't get to answer. Well, yet. okay, we'll we'll let you guys go. Oh, oh, we'll let you guys go on that really quick. If just give us a quick answer to that. Um, well, my answer is that my answer is that you know I think they're both equally bad because if he's going to spend five grand on a doll, then it's you're obviously. Money he, he could spend on you. Well, no, I mean it's the fact that he finds more validation in the doll or the other woman. I think it's both. They're both terrible. Equally bad. They're what both the equally Kiki? bad. Be be gentle. Be gentle with Kiki. I would definitely way more prefer the sex doll because that makes me think that he was, like, caring about my feelings probably, and then also isn't <laughs> exposed to the risk of STDs or having a child Fair with that person, which is like worst case. Yeah. Yeah, low-key agree with that. Maybe he's trying to, like, step up his sex game with the doll and like, <laughs> practice some crazy moves. I don't know. Does the doll have an uh, opinion? Does she get to give him reviews after? Was it no. consensual? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a crazy question. What would you guys think of him after the fact, finding out he had bought a doll? I would just be like, what can I do better? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. If he prefers an inanimate object to you, that's not a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, Either way, it's sign. not a good no. thing. Because if he's yeah. spending $5,000, I would think it'd be as realistic as possible. So that does kind of, yeah. That's a question <laughs> that you really have to think about before you answer <laughs> because there's so many factors that could go into that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I want us to react to a video. Let, actually, let, I think we did. We get a super chat. Did we? 
Did we do this one? Did we do this one? These women have been socially engineered. No, we have not. These women have been socially engineered and have acquired tastes that aren't genuine to them. When push comes to shove and they had to be stuck with one man, they'd always choose a real man. Yep. That's facts. That's true. Mike Mike Davis, fucking legend. Mike Davis always coming in with the heaters, dude. I'm surprised there's not more roasting, though, Mr. Mike Davis. Yeah, we need some roast. There's a lot to roast here, Mike. You know what? Do you think it was kind of related to our previous conversation as far as, like, people being... Should we pull up the Crowder reaction clip? Go for it. Chase, what do you think? Yeah, go for it. All right. um, This is related to our kind of our discussion about how, you know, when you're... Oh, well, if you're 22, that, you know, you just go to the club, like, whatever. So, Eric, if you can pull up the clip in the video tab... Um, Shout out! To I might have put it. Chat. I might have put it in hidden folder. Yeah. Do you guys know his show got featured on Stephen Crowder, big influencer? He's do you know guy. Stephen Crowder? Yeah. No. Do you guys know who go is? go back up. It might be uh, go up. It's a pretty big deal. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm kind of a big deal. All right. So let's really watch are. this uh, first, really quickly. There was a group of women on a podcast. This has been making the rounds. Uh, and I guess the host, I, I'm not familiar with it, but the host kind of, you know, called them the task and they didn't know what to do with it. They're proclaiming what a wonderful thing it is uh, for women in their 20s to not be in relationships. And they use these broad terms like explore themselves. Anyway, just see how this goes down. I know that they're talking to a bunch of guys, so why would I close myself off to just that one guy? Right? I don't know. No, that makes like, sense. Do you guys agree? Yeah, like why okay. would I take someone seriously when clearly they're yeah, no not one. taking me seriously at all? Yeah. Yeah, Especially because exactly. we're all like in our early 20s. Like this yes, is the time yes. to, to like explore and find yourself too. Exactly. When you say explore and find yourself, does that mean just like get run through by a bunch of dudes? Just, no! I, I, I just whoa, want whoa, to whoa. translate. Wait, where did whoa, you whoa, get that? <laughs> no, I just... Um, like, I I'm meant, just like, translating literally here. Literally finding who you are. Like <laughs> the correct answer is yes. That's what they meant. <laughs> <laughs> or girls. Yeah. Yes. Here's the thing. You're like we're in our twenties. Yeah. You know. You know. The World War II was won by women in their twenties. Like that was a big part of you know the war effort. Yep. Like back yeah. in the day, women in their twenties were working. They had children. They had established families. They had a home. You don't have to in your twenties have a bunch of meaningless relationships and one night stands. It is true. It is there is a double standard. Just to be clear, there is a double, and it's not that we're setting it. Biology is setting the standard. Men don't have that kind of a window. Men can have kids well into their, gosh, Abraham. I mean, you go like it probably into your 90s. I don't know, but I'm sure it can be done. I mean, you need assistance. (laughs) But uh, you do have a certain window. And if you're saying, oh, I'm going to waste my 20s, and women often get into their 30s and they go, oh, 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 they they end up settling. Say, I'm not going to settle for anything less than perfect when you're in your 20s. And then you end up settling for a trash bag in your 30s because now you're up against the clock. (laughs) And I'm not saying, just to be clear, people use this term slut shaming all the time. No, look, that's not, I'm not slut shaming anybody, okay? That being said, look, can we all acknowledge that not most women are whores, okay? Let's be clear about it. Not, not, probably not even a plurality, okay? But some are. (laughs) <laughs> and it's a bad idea. Are we not allowed to say that some are at this point? Like, oh, if you're just going on your and you're going into it with the mindset of I am going to sleep around. I this because it's my twenties. Some women are, and we'd yeah. like to thank your dad. Find guys that are serious about you. Don't don't settle for the guys that obviously aren't taking you seriously. By the way, if you want to be taken seriously, be somebody that can be taken seriously as yeah. well. He didn't quite look it's like this that, but young, I get it. It's this baseline. It's this baseline of, well, we're in our 20s, so this is what we do. Something happens in college. You know, I was in college, so I, uh, you know, was getting ripped all the time. Look, I, I, I drink. I'm not someone who, I don't drink a lot. I have no problem with people who drink. I have no problem with people who uh, do these things responsibly. But to say, well, the baseline is if you're in college, it's four, four years of glorified alcoholism. It doesn't have to be that way. Right. And this is perpetuated by, of course, the entertainment industry saying, well, this is what women should do in your 20s. This is what me- this is what you should do in college. No, no, no. You can make good decisions at any point in your life. <laughs> and they're so dumbfounded. I was like, is that what you- No, that's not what we mean. Well, what do you mean? I mean, you know, have a bunch of relationships and sleep with a lot of guys. Okay, here's the issue. And I will say, it is a double standard when people say, why am I a slut if I do this and men aren't? Okay, that is true. Here's why. You're the gatekeeper. Your set point, women, you control access to sex, right? Because your natural set point is no, I don't know, prove your worth. A man's natural set point is please. So 
you are the rate limiting factor. <laughs> Take advantage of it. We've tried to empower women by stripping them of something with which they're powerful. The, the power. ability to, to pick a suitor. You've given it away. Yeah, you have, uh, you have value. Yes. <laughs> you know. You like, have uh, inherent value. Yeah, that you can use. Like, if I ever hit rock bottom, I just can't go out and sell myself. No, you can't. No. Well, you've well I made can. It. It's just going to be to other men. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so... That's Steven Crowder reacting to one of our videos. Um, let's have, and Frank, thank you for the super chat. We'll get to it after we have the people's reaction here. Um, your reaction to the video. And you touched on a couple different points, but your reaction. Um, oh, he, I think, what did he say? Like, our, our, we're giving away our value as women? Well, he, he said a lot of things, but I mean, one of the things that we sort of talked about earlier on in the show is that you don't have, even though you're young, you don't have to go through a whole phase, basically. You can be trying to find that long-term serious guy. Um, I, I mean, in that, I think in that regard, it's really up to the person. If you find the right person, some people find the right person in high school, for example. You meet that person in high school, you settle down with them, you essentially... Please talk into the microphone. Oh, sorry. Um, I think some people, for example, they meet their forever person in high school. Some people, they don't get married until they're in their 30s. It's really up to personal preference. Would you agree that our culture right now pushes girls to be basically promiscuous and have lots of sex? I think um, society now just pushes women to have, like, to have their own choice because... Women traditionally, not men, have always had people like rules on saying what we can and cannot do kind of in terms of sex. So now I think it's like we want to liberate women. And I'm here for that. So Yeah, because I think that's that's kind of the point that Stephen was making is that we push that in the culture right now for, for girls to go out and, and find themselves, meaning have lots of sex. And that is going to lead you to down the line realize that that's not something that like you're probably going to regret it a lot of girls are regretting it and the good thing is that youtube is now there's more girls out there putting content out about this exact thing girls that were feminists way in their 20s and now they're in their 30s talking about how they wish that they hadn't done some of the things they did in the past and i think it's important that girls look at that and learn from it um i think just well for said. me personally like if the right guy, I think this whole phenomena for me is if when if and when the right guy comes around, like I'm ready and I'm open to it. I'm not like waiting for some specific age for that. I'm not waiting for some specific age for that to happen. I'm also not trying to get married too early. I'm not trying to get yeah. When do you want to get married? I really don't have a specific. I it's just if the right person comes along. Let's for me. say let's say the right guy came along tomorrow and he was like, Lauren, you're amazing. Like, let's go I mean, out. there's a lot of six, guys that six will months. say, Lauren, hold you're on, amazing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, but... hold on, <laughs> Lauren, hold on. Six months down the line, you know, you guys have really hit it off. You've fallen in love, and he's, like, perfect. Okay, and, and honestly. He, and he wants to marry you. Would you do it? I'm someone who does really, like, think with my heart a lot. Yeah, if it was the right person and I really loved him, then, yeah, I would. I honestly would, so. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's not more about, like, I was expecting yeah, you to say, I want my freedom until I'm like later in my 20s. No, I think with my heart a lot, honestly, if someone came along tomorrow and we just like clicked, because that happens for me, someone will come along and I'm just like, oh my God, I need this person. Um, yeah, I think if that were to happen, I would definitely be like, that's a person for me. But right now that's not happening. So I'm not going to force it to happen just because I'm the society's like, you should get married at this age. Your reaction to the video? Well, I think hookup culture is still perpetuated. Um, I mean, on my TikTok, I see all the time, like, people giving advice for, like, guys you're hooking up with, like, um, all this stuff about, you know, in college, like, who you're hooking up with, blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, I do agree with Lauren in that it's, like, a personal... Thing. like if you don't want to engage in that culture you don't have to um yeah but i do think social media and society still pushes that in some ways 
I mentioned this last time I was on, but I have a very strong opinion that our modern culture is heavily promoting and pushing hookup culture and casual sex on younger girls, telling them it's empowering, telling them it's good for them, telling them it's how they're going to find themselves, even though I don't know what you're learning about yourself by having sex with a guy. Tell me where, like, is it the pillow talk where you learn everything about yourself and you can't be doing that in any, like, more meaningful way? Do it! Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to press that one. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I did not mean to press that button. My bad. Go, sorry, keep going. And, keep going. And then, um, Subversive Brian. on another note about, like, what if, you know, like, like, doing this, like, having fun, sleeping around until the right guy comes around, Personally, I feel like I am not only like welcoming and attracting like the best guy possible by abstaining from hookup culture, but that is like a, I don't see it as like I'm denying myself by not hooking up with or going out with guys who I know I'm just aren't, you know, aren't the type that I'm looking for. It's more of like, I enjoy the fact that I feel like I'm rewarding my future partner and like my future husband and stuff by having my priorities in line and yeah, pr- protecting my body and I can, I can like tell you, Tara, 99% of guys are gonna really appreciate that. Yes. And I mean, I hope so. I mean, I'm just going off the impression that that's, like I, I think it was a lie to like tell girls that the ego boost you're getting from having sex with tens and tens of guys is is worth just not, just not, not only just like the STD birth control things you're, you know, like exposing yourself to pregnancy risk, but just, I I just, yeah. How did you get to this point? Because a lot of girls, you know, like, like you just said, like guys will really listen to you if you, if you say these, these things, you know, we, we look for that. So, but how did you get to that point? That's a good question. I feel, I definitely feel like I was lied to, like when I was younger, lied to in the way of a, it was the pressure to like be a strong independent woman by having casual sex was very strong and that that is the right way to do it that would be good for me in the long run i i have no one i mean i mean my my um parents were never sort of strict about sex i never felt any family pressure i didn't grow up religious I'm religious now but i didn't have that before to be compelling me towards some sort of you know route sexually i just sort of had to find it on my own but it was really just i mean it was a combination of just being self-reflective and asking myself, what am I getting out of this? Because I feel like I'm, I'm not getting anything. I think yeah. I deserve better. Are, are your friends sharing the same beliefs as you? Yeah, that's also a good question. Something that I was going to say. Because I, I'm, I'm a 21-year-old girl, you know, having the time of my life, like in my 20s. But I don't drink and do alcohol. I mean, I don't, you know, drink mm-hmm. and do drugs heavily. I'm not, like, going out to frat parties every night. I'm not, I don't engage in casual sex or like hookup culture. And I would still say compared to my friends, I'm happier, I'm healthier, and I have yeah, a more stable sense of like my self-worth and my priorities in line. You, and I I, yeah. I advocate to them every day, like all, all day every day they'll be like, "Why is this guy like how do I they'll be so fixated on how do I get this guy to take me seriously?" But all they want to do is meet guys at a club downtown or meet him at a frat party party. And and yeah, I'm like, "Come on. I don't know." I feel like there's your, there's your hint. So I found the video interesting, especially since, you know, I don't think your, I don't think your age is a um, excuse to have a certain type of behavior. Um, When I was 22, I was having a baby and I was having a family and I was working full time. So, you know, in those aspects, it's like there is a whole hookup culture that now that I'm in the dating world again, is so hard to relate with. It's so difficult to relate with these yeah. people because I obviously wanted the family at the age that everybody was at the club. Mm-hmm. I was working full time while they're working at restaurants and going to classes. Did you so so party. did you want you wanted a family at 22? I did. I I've, I've always wanted Did a you so you wanted to like when you had your kid, you you knew the guy you were having the kid with and you wanted it. So the situation I had just met him. So I mean the situation could have been better. How, I wasn't on birth control. How how long after you met him did you get pregnant? It was like 3 months. Okay. It was really bad. Mm. But I stayed with him for 4 years, right? I committed to this person. 
And when I got pregnant, I questioned as a mother, you know, since I didn't really know this person, am I willing to be a single mom if it didn't work out? You know, am I willing to take that risk? And so I did. And so be, having a family was super important to me. And I did feel like I had connected with the person. I also feel to the other side of this, I was 22 and mentally immature, which is why I made the choices I did. So what would you say to girls that are 22 right now? I would say you have to sit down and make a list for yourself. What do you want? And how do you think you're going to get it there? Like, you have it right on the head. You know what you want. You have your fixation. You know, you're good. You've... What is what? so funny? Just the comment. Oh, the comment. It's comment. Oh, yeah. Not what you're saying. Not it's what fine. you're saying. So, I mean, like, you have it together. You know what you want. And you know how to get it there. And what is going to you know, ultimately give you the future that you want. But I do feel like there are a lot of females that don't know what they want. And so how else are they supposed to find that, especially if they don't have great examples around them and with the hookup culture being perpetuated and pushed on people the way that it is, where, again, it goes back to the social conditioning of breaking up the family nucleus. So we're yes. socially conditioned. You, we're socially conditioned to operate this way. You asked a really good question there. How else are women supposed to know what they want without, you know, and I'm filling in the blanks, experimenting, discovering themselves and playing the field, so on and so forth. How else are women supposed to figure out what they want? This is where I think, so I'm a Christian, and mm -hmm. this is where I think godly men who are godly leaders in society come into play. Mm -hmm. Because what you were describing, this whole story of how you can find fulfillment by sleeping with a bunch of guys in your 20s. This is a lie that society is selling women. And a lot of women on the other side of this, they find themselves in their late 20s, early 30s, and all the guys that they want to be with want to be with younger women, and they don't want to be with them. And then these are the women that end up on antidepressants, single and childless in their 40s, right? This is a lie in society that that brings women fulfillment. This is where I think godly men come into play it's our job as men to say that will not bring you fulfillment it's our job to hold ourselves to higher standards not be fuck boys that are going to cheat on you guys and and ruin your guys' lives in the process that's not good either i think it's our job to you know tell women hey that's not going to bring you fulfillment and also when the right girl comes along treat her right don't be an alcoholic don't knock her up after three months before if you guys you know before you know if you're right for one another <laughs> I think, I think raising the standards for men is, is really how we, we fix this. I think that's detrimental. You think that's important. what I just said? Like, that is detrimental. Like, that is something that is completely necessary. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. so necessary. I, I personally believe men raising our standards for who we are, yeah. being straightforward with women about whether or not we're going to use them, cheat on them, so on and so forth. It's, it's really imperative for us to uh, do a better job. And I think, I think if we do a better job, I think women will follow because men are naturally leaders. Exactly. What? Are you what? serious right now? What, what are you laughing what? about? What? You said men are naturally leaders. Yeah. Men, men are naturally yes. leaders. What, what's wrong with that? Let, let her, let, let's let her explain. I honestly, like, no, I don't even want to go back and forth about this because I was just... That was a crazy statement. <laughs> that men are leaders? Yeah. But the, they are. The Bible, the Bible tells us. Historically, they are. I, yeah, I, I'm not, I, I'm, trust, I trust you're not a Christian. I'm but sorry. It, no, I am a Christian, actually. Do you believe what the Bible says? No, I don't. You're a Christian, but you don't believe what the Bible says. <laughs> yeah, I honestly like, don't really fuck with religion. Well, do, let's, let's just, for, for women who aren't Wait. religious, you can, you can make this argument without um, making an argument from authority. So, so like taking the religion yeah, you, out of it, you, you can still... You could, you could, absolutely. I mean, so first let me just say, the Bible calls men to be the spiritual leaders of their households, okay? But you're talking to someone who isn't even religious, so this is just Wait, going you just, you just said you're a Christian. Christian. You just said you're a Christian. I'm a Christian, but I'm not religious. Christian in name only. Yeah, I was raised Christian, but I'm not religious. Okay, so aside from religion... This is going to trigger so many feminists, and I'm okay with it. Men, on average, are more stress-resilient than women are. 
This is part of the reason why only men are in special operations, because only men can withstand the stress of going into the military, going into the harder units. Would you guys agree that men, on average, strong men, are more stress resilient than women are? I'm just, I don't even want to get into this. I just feel like that comment made me laugh. Yeah, I gotta be honest. It was just, Sh- it was just slightly not. phrased in a way. That no, was you're like, triggered by, by I, I men being no, leaders? No, I wasn't triggered. It was just you, you, I can see, like, when you were saying it, I could see why it was, I could tell it was about to, like, it was just a little, it was a little so heavy do you, do you on not, the, do you not it was think only that because men, I didn't do you, do you know why Do you not think that men should be leaders? No, no, I thought it was great. It's, it's do you just think that, that if men think held themselves it, to a higher standard and they were better leaders in society, that would change society? I'm, I'm not opposing in anything you were saying. I was just going to add that I think it was more like you could have left some room for, like, women there also, like, leading the movement to, like, not be women, part of women can. Culture. Women yeah. absolutely can. I think can. it was just, it was like. Women absolutely can. The, the yeah. problem. But I mean, yeah, it's great that. Well, I mean, men, what men movement? Be, just what movement are you talking about when you say? Well, movement? I don't know. I'll start. I was just yeah. saying like um, that. It sounded like you were applying it could only come from men. No, but I'm it, assuming you. You can. That leadership could also come from it, women it, as well. It, you're not just you're, men. You're that ab- was, I think, just the impression that they got. You're absolutely right. It can come come from women as well, and that's what Stephen Crowder was getting at in his clip he was saying you guys are the gatekeepers so if you guys decided that you weren't going to sleep with a bunch of chads who were going to use you there wouldn't be chads that were using you guys you know what i mean but the problem is is that women want to sleep with chads who end up using them so we have this culture that keeps on perpetuating yeah i can't change what you guys are going to do all i can do is call other men up to the standard of not being chads that use women constantly and i know that if if as as men we take accountability for that and we change that, that will change the culture. Because I don't expect women to do that. Women want to sleep with dudes. Account- women, accountability. You want to sleep with guys. You're making a great yeah, point, too. Girls. Because oh, accountability girls. is everything as well. Because because we, we need you to be held accountable. Because it used to be that if you did that, if you slept around and did that, like that was publicly looked down upon. And today, it's not at all. It's yeah, promoted. That's great. No, it's great that we could just do just whatever we want. Great, we can do whatever we want, just like men have always been able to do whatever they want. Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fine. If, I mean, that's fine if that's what you want to do, but in, when it comes in the context of a relationship, to make it work well, you're not going to you're not gonna want to do that. You're going to probably regret it later on. Are you on. talking about cheating? No, I'm talking about sleeping around, being promiscuous, having lots of sexual partners. In regards to just like in general, like in relationships? Can you in, no, as a, as a female, as a female. Yeah, can you elaborate? On As that? a female, you shouldn't you shouldn't be sleeping around with a bunch of dudes. If you do, Why not? if you do, I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying you can't. You legally can do it. You can do. I I believe that a girl can do whatever she wants to do, but You're don't saying, expect. So, so like sex doesn't feel as good to a woman as it does to a man. What? No, that's, that's not, not at all what I'm what? saying. Okay, because, I mean actually, like, you... why can't girls have sex with a just a, a same you can, people you as can, guys want to? You can do whatever you, you want. But men, most men have an issue with women who are promiscuous that and who really have been sucks run through. For men, I guess. Why does that suck for men? It doesn't suck for us at all. It, not at we all. We can just find a woman that isn't promiscuous. Okay, cool. It's fine. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> I mean, this kind of touches into body count. Well, and we so can, many men are extremely promiscuous. Right. Not so many. Mm, a small minority of a men. A small, small Proportion just the ones that you, the ones that you want. The dudes you're talking to, Lauren. A lot of the guys you're talking to are the promiscuous guys because you're a hot girl here in Isla Vista talking all the chads, all the frat boys. Guys you're talking to down in Cabo, these are the guys that are sleeping around with a lot of girls. A lot of the guys that you aren't paying attention to aren't doing that at all. Most men are invisible to women. Like the dude yeah, who works all, at McDonald's is invisible yeah. to you. All of the guys who aren't cheating on their girlfriends are invisible <laughs> to Lauren. <laughs> and what's on McDonald's saw, too? Like. I saw a baddie working at Chipotle the other day. Not gonna yeah, lie. Come on. I, bet she's I would life. date. I would date a baddie. Anyways, that's besides uh, the point. But that's a good point too that you're making about as men like we we we're cool with that. We're cool with that. If you work at a fast food restaurant. But you're you're 18 to 20 years old. We're cool with that. Like girls wouldn't give the time of day to a guy that's working at Chipotle. Over 18, 20, you're not cool with that. <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying is that that can be way more attractive than than a girl that's in her 30s like and has an attorney. And has, yeah, who's yeah. an attorney. And girl, don't girls do. don't seem to wrap their heads that's around not hot, that. Like a girl not, in her not no. 
No, it's a not. Woman, it's not, it's a not, woman, not. No. A woman's career. I don't want to date a high-powered attorney. Me, so. Well, okay. So a woman's career, a woman's ambition, a woman's money, it it doesn't make you more attractive. Yeah. Whereas, like a man who's hyper successful, ambitious, he's a doctor, he has a prestigious career, he's an attorney, for example, or he's say a musician or a, whatever it may be. I think a lot of women would say, oh, a guy who's a doctor is a real catch. But men, we don't really, I guess it's a kind of okay bonus, like if you're making your own money, but like in some ways it can actually be a You don't think a, a woman detractor. who's a doctor is attractive? She can be, I mean, she can be, the thing is, is that women don't share their resources the same way with men, the same way that men share their resources with women. Yep. So also a, do a female doctor, if a woman's a doctor, she's, if she's not a doctor, she's busy. It's also not going to make her any more or less attractive to me. I mean, I would, I would honestly prefer a wife who isn't super tied up in a stressful career. That's yeah. the last thing I want for my wife. Okay. Do you guys no. prefer or are okay with like the stay-at-home mom idea? I, I want or are that. you like, are that's you guys a great okay thing. of that? Or are that. you like, we, no, we, we love that. offended optimal. by it because no, you think it's, no, no, that, no, no, it's not like at a freeloader all. The vibe opposite or. of that. No, no. We want that. No, Tara, it's literally my goal to make enough money so that I can have my wife stop working, take care of our home, take care of our kids, and be a good partner to me. That's literally my goal. Like, that's, like, the most ideal thing. I'm not even saying there's anything I'll, bad about that. Like, that's totally your preference. I may be different well, you all, No, it's not. You also said earlier in the conversation you want a guy who's going to take good care of you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's totally your preference. I'm saying there's nothing bad about it's, Isn't that. it your preference, too? What do you mean? Oh. Don't you want that? You said you want a guy who takes good care of you. I want us to be equal. Don't you want to be that? I want to be equals. Do you agree with so that? So you would like would prefer to work just as much as your husband as opposed to not working so you could be equal? Yeah, I really like that's never, I feel like, been a big thing for me. Like, well, you, okay, so you have two one options. One person work more than the other. But you have two options. You have a guy who makes so much money that you would not have to work or a guy who's got a job, a decent job, probably around the same as you, but you both have to work to provide for your family. I think as long as I love him and like, but okay, which of the two would you prefer? I don't have a preference. You don't. You, you introduce kids into the equation. You'll definitely like there's have a preference. Way, there's a lot more to consider. Than I mean, just maybe that. there's things you want to achieve career-wise. I think that's fine. But I think, I mean, probably there's guys out there too that, if a girl came along and was like, "You can be a stay-at-home dad," and it wouldn't introduce. The thing is, most women are not going to be attracted to that to that guy. That's well, a different discussion, I know. but. I I know I've heard of people where it's like the woman is a doctor and the guy just literally stays at home. That's rare. Thing. No, most, I mean most I, women I would feel so emasculated in a situation like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's, that's your preference. My wife but, wears um, the pants. She also pegs me when she gets home from working. <laughs> like that's like how I imagine that. But yeah, anyway, so that does exist. The, it, it exists, but, but it's, it's not super rare. It, I mean, it's, it, it's rare, rare. And, and when it does exist, those are usually the relationships that don't they don't work out well. The woman is going to be for sure controlling in that relationship. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. quickly on this note, a guy who's a doctor would probably gladly date a woman who's a barista, but who's attractive and meets his certain yes. metrics. But I'm sure that but, guy will be controlling. Not necessarily. That's such an but, assumption. but let me such an let me just finish the point. But a woman who's a doctor, while yes, there are some outliers, they might date a guy who's a barista. Most women who are doctors, most women who are, say, attorneys, you know, very successful, hyper successful women, they're gonna want to date a guy who's at least on their level or higher. So yeah, and as, that's what that's what the studies show. Girls, yes. the higher, the more money you make as a woman, the harder it is for you to find a part a life partner because yes. girls always need they they strongly 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 for someone who makes at least as much as them yeah yep. as, if not higher yes Based. so as as a woman becomes more successful the more money she makes her actual pool of potential partners it's shrinks smaller, not bigger. whereas men as they become more successful the their pool widens and widens and widens so yeah um i have a question sure so do you guys believe in relationship roles do you Absolutely. think that each gender plays a role in the relationship and what is that role? You want to take that? Really quick, we, we will answer that. Yeah. Let me just get through these last couple super chats here really quick and then, because we got a big one, so I just want to shout out Frank Sustacia. Good question. Yeah. Frank Sustacia. 
Sesteda. Thank you for the t big $25 super chat. Hey, Brian, this is Frank, a new watcher. Can't stop watching for like three weeks now. Would like to see a Latina edition. Ooh, voice crack. Nice. Or a Christian edition. Well, if you tune in on the 27th, I believe we have our friend Grace in the chat. I think she's going to be coming on, I believe. Let's go. Next Is that next Thursday? Yeah, next Thursday, Grace is coming on. And then the Latina edition, stay tuned. I believe Tuesday, we got three uh, Latinas coming. Chola's coming back. I shouldn't say that. Why? Well, whatever. Fuck. Terry, you said you're religious. Are you a Christian? I'm more um, Catholic than Basically Christian. The same but thing. yeah, so I guess. Yeah. You should come for that episode on the 27th. Sure. We need to get some feisty girls we too. Should, yeah, okay. we should okay. get some like ultra feminists for that one. What, what is yeah. it? What, what episode is it? Uh, the the Christian edition. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we've got Grace Olakowski coming um, in. Okay. She's one of my followers. We've been trying to set this up for a while. But yeah, Frank, thank you for the uh, big $25 soup chat. Thank you. I think this is your first one, man. So really appreciate the support, man. You're a fucking legend. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate you, Frank. Thanks for supporting our boy. Thank you, man. I, I Guys, I've been in the red for, I mean, I'm in the red. So anyways, um, really, I, I genuinely appreciate when you guys soup chat, support, when you become members. If we can get one member tonight, you know, hook it up. But when are, uh, when are you starting your OnlyFans to pay the bills, Brian? I'm, guys, if I don't get, like, if we don't get some more memberships, some more uh, super chats, like, I'm going to have to start an OnlyFans. <laughs> Kiki's going to have to peg me. Like, it's, it's going to be bad, guys. It's going to be bad. Please, guys, I don't want to be pegged. Okay. Dave on Jackson with the $10 super chat. Imagine saying men aren't leaders while sim simultaneously arguing that women need to find themselves by getting... Jesus Christ, bruv. What just Eric, happened? fix that. <laughs> Eric! Uh-oh. Might be your computer. Hold on, hold on. Let me go. We're having technical difficulties, Thank folks. Yeah. Going back to the, the gender roles thing, though. Do you, uh, do, what, what were you going to say about that? Yeah, well, I mean, biblically speaking, men are called to be protectors for their families, providers for their families. They're called to be the leaders for their families. I think it makes the most sense from a role-based perspective and a complementarian perspective. If a man is being the provider and the protector and the leader for his family, it's good for a woman to follow the man's lead. It's good for a woman to be a good nurturer, caretaker for her husband and also for the kids. Those are the roles I like. You know, I, th I think that's how families work the best. And I think when there's tension and friction and people don't want to accept those roles, both men and women, I think it causes family structures yeah. to break down, you know? And there's, there's a lot of dudes, let me just say too, there's a lot of dudes that don't want to lead and they don't want to lead effectively. And I think it causes women a lot of stress, you know? You know what I'm saying? I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Elder Scrolls, thank you for becoming a member, man. You're a legend. Thank you. Really appreciate the support. Let me get this last super chat here. Jordan Huber with the $10 super chat. By the way, guys, we are going to wrap up soon, so get your last-minute super chats in. Become a member. You get a ton of cool perks. Jordan, thank you for the $10 super chat. Ladies, if you provide financial security, would you not want the man to make as much or more? Can he slum? No. No, that's why it doesn't work for women when it comes to status, because women want security. Yep. It's a fair point. Good it's point, a, Jordan. That's a good point. I, oh, before, before we close out, I would be curious if we can get to no, her we'll, question. No, we'll, we'll do, we will, uh, maybe we'll give another 10, 15 minutes, which will invariably. It's a re that's a really good question. I'm, um, curi I'm curious to hear what those two girls have to yeah. say. Yeah, let me, I think we got one last. Kanye West, thank, for, you, thank you for becoming well, a member. The shit you've been saying recently has been kind of, out of pocket, not gonna lie. I know that's not the real Kanye West, but. Kanye, don't stop, keep going. Sorry, okay, so go ahead with your, uh, you had a question, right? I did, so my question was, do you believe in relationship roles and what do you think they should be? So, I, you know, I think one of the, the issues that, that a lot of people are having right now in relationships is this sort of uh, mentality, especially coming from girls, that they need to sort of compete with the guy, I think, and there's, there's competition. Yeah. And this is where the sort of idea of respect comes into play, which is more like we, we want girls that, that see how hard we work and how much we want to do to make it work with them. Mm -hmm. and, and when we don't feel that they're doing that, it, it causes lots of tension and lots of competition. So I, I tend to think that having, you know, roles sort of helps that. What, what are the and, roles that you believe in? Do you believe in roles? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that um, in general, I think that you know, men going out and making the money, this is what women 
want in men is like they want guys that earn lots of money right and they want girls that i mean they want they want guys that work out and and work hard on themselves so i think it's it's fair to say that like they should have that that role of like going out and getting the bread bringing it home and but with that being said if you're looking for that like you have to sort of play a more feminine role in a relationship and be able to fit that because that's what we need we, I mean, that that pushes us further like if we see that our girl is like giving us that support to go out like that is that's motivational that's motivational we, that that pushes us to work harder like men will work really hard if we find a girl that that's willing to like just just support us in what we're Be our doing. cheerleader yes yeah yes yeah there's no better feeling than going out into the world crushing conquering as a man and yeah. your woman just yes. so deeply appreciating and it i don't think women like understand how that feels as a man it feels amazing it, it's the best feeling you can have yeah really it is. makes it all worth it yeah so I will also say from, I know you guys aren't Christians, but from a biblical perspective, the Bible tells us that a man who won't provide for his own family mm -hmm. is worse than an unbeliever. That's like the, the most dishonorable thing that a guy can do in God's eyes. And there's a lot of deadbeats out there that don't care about providing for their families. And I think that's just like such a loser, lame thing, you know, like it, it's, it's such an honorable thing to be the hero, the champion that goes out there, provides for your family, protects them and is appreciated for that. Yeah, I think we need more hero culture. Yeah. Yes. There's not a lot of yes. hero culture, and I think about that all the time. Like, I'm looking for a Hercules, you know? Like, As you should. Having that in culture inspires men and motivates men to be better and live up to their full potential by giving men sex whenever they want, by having the lowest standards possible for guys. That's helping no one. It's certainly not letting them live up to their potential, wanting, wanting to be the breadwinner, all of this. None of this is is just good for our culture it's a great thing to want men to be like amazing strong brilliant like yes. providers all of this that's yeah. a good thing yes. we should be like loving it I, I want to speak on your point giving sex to men whenever they want i want to hear what you guys think wait 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 real quick before yeah. we go to them it's, yeah. a, it's a good question yeah. to what you were saying and to go back to what we were talking yeah. about before women being the gatekeepers of sex as a woman you should want a hercules for a man I think every woman wants a Hercules for a man, a champion. I think we do need to return to that hero culture. And Wait, I can tell you. What's e up? Even women who are mid? Even women who are mid can have the, their mid Hercules okay. pros. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But, but to, to, to what I was saying, as women, if you guys were like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to have sex with a guy unless he's the most honorable Hercules who wants to take care of me and wants to be the man. If you guys just like didn't have sex with losers, it would call all men up to become that honorable Hercules hero champion. And that, mm. I so badly want to no. see a return to that. Mm. What do you guys yeah. think about that? Yeah. yeah, Can we agree? I think if you're not religious, you can go back to a primal state, right? So you're going back to primal. In, in nature, the male species, you know, whatever the species is, does naturally take on that role. Yep. It doesn't Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. Go back to cavemen. It's just, cavemen it's went human, out and human women nature. were home. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry to cut you off. No, 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 good. no, no, that's good. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to hear because you made an interesting point, which is extremely rare to hear from, from girls about giving sex to their man whenever he wants it. Well, I meant, I, sorry, I meant not yeah. in a relationship. I meant oh. like giving sex to guys like who you, you meet at a bar. He's like oh. barely even bought you a drink and you give okay. sex. I meant that kind of like giving. Oh, sex okay. To well, okay. Well, then I let, wasn't let, thinking like in a relationship. Let's okay. Let's talk about in a relationship. Okay. In a relationship, den when when girl when girls uh, deny guys of sex, thoughts. I mean, I don't really know. I don't. I don't really know when that would. I guess like. Because that happens you mean like, to many you mean guys. Like your partner initiates and then. And they reject it. And girls say, um, I'm not in the mood. Like, what, what do you expect I the know, guy to do in that situation? Yeah, I mean, I know. Ideally, you're with someone where that doesn't really happen. Yeah. You know, if you're starting to get, like, not in the mood with your partner, maybe, you know, yeah. you need to, like, amp up your energy levels, drink more maca powder or something, you know, <laughs> get more sunlight. I don't know. But yeah. also, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to say, like, a woman should never, deny, like, it's not that like a woman should never deny a guy, but just, I don't know, you know, you never, you always wanted to have a balance. It's, it's really important that your partner doesn't feel like sexually invalidated, like <laughs> they initiated it. It's important that they, um, yeah, I mean, it's a sensitive subject. I, I'm a firm believer that if like once sex is out of the relationship, like the relationship's dead. So like yeah. sex needs it to like survive. Uh -huh. And so, yeah. 
that's something you just like need to be paying attention to. It's true. I don't know if that answers yeah. it. I haven't really thought much about that. So that's yeah. all I have off of like the top of my head. Yeah, well, it's a common thing in relationships. I think a lot of guys out there experience this where they, uh, they, uh, they, they don't, they're not able to have sex with their girl anymore. So what do you, what do you guys think about it? What about a guy not being able to have sex with their girl? Yeah, like the girl like rejecting them. In a relationship? Yeah. Um, Is that cool or not? I mean, I know in a relationship I've had, the guy wanted to have sex a lot, and I didn't want to do that. And it was I feel like the need for him to have sex was attached to some other insecurity from a previous relationship that didn't even have anything to do with me. So, um, yeah, it's kind of my take on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Let me hit some super chats real quick. And we got, we got a great Davis. one from Mike Davis. We've got Mike Davis with the big $20 super chat. Before we close up, this is for Liv. No matter what men you've met in the past, <laughs> no matter what you've seen or think you know, you have met the top G, and I can show you a universe you didn't know existed. Has he slid into your DMs yet? Not yet, no. I think, he, okay. Mike. He's so mysterious. He'll, he'll throw this out, but he never reaches <laughs> out to me. You know, you know what, though? He... He dropped, was it two shows ago that he dropped the... Uh, it was the last show. It was last Tuesday. He dropped a $100 soup chat for the Fit Check. Guys, if you want the Fit Check <laughs> oh on live, it's there. Okay. Mike Davis, thanks for the support, man. Really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to watch one video, and then we'll have one more final question, and then we're going to wrap up. I want to talk about this sh today just because we talk about it almost every time, but we got to do it. Okay, should body count matter? Yes or no? Um, oh. I don't know. I feel like I don't really have an opinion on that. Okay, do you take issue with men caring about a woman's body count? Um... I don't, I don't know. I feel like it really... I don't know. We'll come back to you. Yeah. Liv, go ahead. We'll move um, it this way. Okay, um... For girls, I mean, as far as should body count matter, I'm always going to say the same thing, and I think it's always going to be, for a guy, it's his preference, um, and for a girl, it's our preference as well, so, okay, yeah. I'm going to say no, it shouldn't matter for either side. When you take body count into consideration, you are then opening up your past, right? And people get fixated on that. And you can actually kill a relationship before it even starts just with a body count. I mean, you can. You can. Okay. You sure. can kill that, a no, relationship hey, before it even starts. Certainly. You're, you're definitely free to have that. Um, so your stance is body count should not matter. No, okay. exactly. So that way That's you're not fine. stuck in the past. Sure. I think body count can matter so much as it isn't like an indicator of someone's relationship with sex and relationships. Um, yeah, but I guess there's always more to the picture. Would you take? But an, it's a helpful indicator. Would you take an issue with a guy, for example, not wanting to? Did, to date a woman who had a high body count? Um, no, I mean, I don't really take issue with that. I would only take issue with things that related, like, to me. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have that much, like, strong opinions, though, in general, of how other people okay. make Fair their enough. baiting decisions. So, yes or no, should body count matter? Um, I mean, yeah, to an extent. If it's, like, 100, that's, like, red flag. Okay. I would say no. I try to be as judgmental as possible as long as we're both keeping each other safe um you mean if, as, as non-judgmental as possible yes gotcha as non-judgmental as possible um and if it comes up then like yeah it might be an issue but if we're both being safe about it i don't need to know unless it like affects us in the moment i think for me the reason why my answer is more i don't know is because to be honest it's really not something I care or ask about so and I find it pretty offensive when someone asks me about that you think it's offensive yeah. if someone were to ask what your bot what your body count is yeah I really just like that's not something that I personally not something I really care or like care to ask about so if a guy had slept honest. with like 350 women would you but care the thing is it's like I really just I don't you, care you don't to ask care. about that there's many other things I care about and their body count's really not one of them 
In terms of asking, I do think it's poor taste. Like, if a guy's like, what's your body count? Because for one, I don't think it's that, like, appropriate to, like, talk about your, like, past sex lives in, like, super detail if you're, like, just starting to see someone. But um, so not also, a, not I don't know. It's just question. not. Yeah, I guess it's not a first date question. If you're going to, like, open up. But if it's it. a deal breaker but for also, someone, like, why not just get it out of the way? If that's, like, a genuine yeah, deal breaker, Yeah, I mean, breaker, if a guy has well. as a deal breaker, yeah, I mean, that's important for, like, you to know, too. Also, it's not but, hard to tell. It's not hard to tell when girls have high body counts. It's it, it's very apparent. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing about but, girls. Yeah. When, My man. When, the only when, that. when we go, yeah, when you go out on a date with a girl, it, it's, it's very apparent. Like, if they're talking about clubbing and traveling and doing all this stuff. No, I mean, that's I just the reality. Clubs. That's we the reality. Go to clubs and we don't sleep with people yeah. every time we go out. But so you can get going, you can get a out, sense. Going to clubs indicative of a high I'm body saying count. you don't have to ask the question to kind of get an idea as a, as a guy. I mean, you just start picking it up. <laughs> One I mean, last thing, I I also just sort of yeah. look like I don't think negatively of a guy if he asks it, but it's more just like I associated with younger guys. I've never had any guy who was older that I was seeing ever ask like what's your body count? Like, what's your body count? I've only ever had it be younger guys. So I don't know if that's just like older guys have, yeah. have could tell that girls are uncomfortable when they ask or, but yeah. that's also just, so it's just in general a question I associate with. I, guys, I would never older ask. Guys, I've never I would never ask. I, I think it's, I think really it's very obvious. That. I think it's obvious. I feel like why ask if people can lie? G girls are going to give it that's away. True. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, always trust people's actions over the words in the first place. So. Okay, so you two and you, body count shouldn't matter. Thus, the question is, what is your body count? If, if body count doesn't matter... I don't say that on a public podcast. But okay, you yeah. just said body count doesn't matter. I think it doesn't matter if it's Okay, like hold on. We'll, we'll come back to you too. What's your body count? <laughs> so I'm not going to answer, and it's because it goes back to my point that it dredges up history. That's history. It's, it's no longer valid in my life. It's no longer something that I am continuously, you know, seeking. I'm not sleeping around. I'm not, you know, obviously going out and having sex with every person I ran it, run into. So I feel like the conversation should be more about what are your morals and what are you doing now versus what did you do when you were 18, 19, 20 years old, you know? So past shouldn't matter? I don't think your past should matter. I think what you're doing now and your mentality now and what you're moving forward with is what matters. So you had previously dated a guy who slept with prostitutes? Yeah, I did, and I found out after, okay. but... Did you not like it? He wasn't doing it while I was with him. So, I mean, so it's, it it's, doesn't not, matter? It's, not, it's not my business. Okay. It was in his past. Okay. That's the difference gonna, between girls and guys. Yeah, I'm not going to judge like, someone for a decision they made right. 10 years ago. That's right. ridiculous. And, and we, we do, a lot of us do, though. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. About you? Did you want to continue with your question, Brian? Yeah, I mean, would you date a guy who has a criminal history? I have. You have, but would... Would I do it now? Sure. I mean, it's a red flag, so I would have to do a lot of digging. They wouldn't be at the top of my prospect list. But there's nothing in a guy's past that would preclude you preclude you from wanting to date him? I mean, they can't commit murder, they can't do anything with kids, and they can't be but a it's sex in his past. It's in his past, right? Yeah, but you're talking about criminal acts versus sleeping around with women. That's a very different conversation. Yeah, but... Like comparing sex to, like murder is like a little it's a little <laughs> outlandish <laughs> haram it's no, okay um well, okay so do you guys want to answer the question um about i definitely kind of agree with her if it's not affecting what's going on in the moment i don't need to know your history um yeah i think when it comes to criminal backgrounds for me that kind of does maybe speak a little bit about that person's personality values morals and i mean okay so you don't want to share your body count you just oh, said body count shouldn't about, matter um dating someone with the criminal well we'll history. come back we'll come back to that but what's your body count yeah i'm i'm not going to disclose that <laughs> okay that, i mean that's fine but you you said body count shouldn't matter what about you yeah i don't think it matters unless it's infecting what's going on it's tara it's tara by oh, the way how dare tara. you Brian. She's like, like how these people have been on. <laughs> can, can I ask something I've been like thought about? I'm trying to figure out like what is the male equivalent to making, um, if since guys consider body count so, so, so important to girls, 
asking them to like say it on air what is the equivalent of that is it maybe asking guys on the show to say like exactly how much money they've made this past year and have in their account is that like an equivalent because that, like just i'm just trying question. to figure out no, what the equivalent is because well you just you know, i don't know last you, year's you, you guys are the women what do you think because i mean What's you guys are telling us you care so much about body count and then you know brian goes and like say it in front of everyone on the internet so um, what's something that we all think we care a lot about that we should ask them to share on air? Mm. That's a good question. Being completely be, honest be, about it. You guys, you guys should find an answer. I first. mean, <laughs> one proposition I have is the money one because, you know, if we look yeah. at, like, um, psycho mating research, yeah. it shows that almost yeah. in every country in the world, men's top priority is, um, well, physical Sexual attractiveness. Purity. Yeah, and yeah, in some places that... And then for women, it's um, their material resources. So what yeah. was your guys' tax return last year? So here's how we'll do this. <laughs> Whatever your guys' question is that you decide on, I'll answer it as long as it's a fair equivalent. I mean, I don't I care. You guys don't. I don't hold want to shoot mine. So I, yeah. I can't speak for them. But if, if they answer it, I think it would be fair for you guys to answer the body count question. First. <laughs> I give you my word. I will answer it. I mean, I'm not dying. I don't need. I don't need you guys to ah, disclose your financial okay. information. So I don't care. But didn't, what I'm saying, didn't, I'm not going to make you, you do that. Didn't you answer it on the last podcast? I did. Yeah. Okay. So if you want, go watch that one. Give it a give it a like. Another view. Just and just throwing <laughs> this out too. This is sort of common saying though. But so women care about where a man's going, like his future, and men mm -hmm. care about a woman's past. Bingo. Yeah. That's so, a good way to sum it up. Bingo. That's it. That's all yeah. that matters. That's why we care. You guys don't care about the past, you know. But your future. Women do care. Like though. A deal breaker. Like, about well, like a okay, man's past? like where the guy works. What what's his job? What's his salary? Has he been married before? His past criminal history. Right. Does he have kids with other women? Mm -hmm. um, did he used to be? Well, I'm not gonna say it. Hold on, I got a list here. Yeah. Um, you know, has he had ten jobs in the last three years? Has he been evicted from apartments, his debt, yeah. all these sorts of things like women probably have a vested interest in this as far as find for a long term partner. So, right. I mean, right. I brought up the he used to have sex with prostitutes thing. I mean, you answered that. I don't know if you guys want to come in, if you'd be OK dating a guy who used to sleep with escorts or prostitutes. You don't need to look at her before you answer, by the way, you can just answer the question. <laughs> Please, you gotta you gotta speak into the microphone. I, I just really don't know how that would even come up. Forget about how it comes up. It came up. He slept with prostitutes. Do you care? I mean, I would have to say yes. I would care. Yeah, I would care. That might be a little gross, but. And it's gross when women have a high body count. Fair. Thank you. I just think it's gross when a guy sleeps with a prostitute personally, but I don't really care as much about they like both the high, have a bo high body, body count. count. That has nothing to do with But that. if the prostitute sleeps with multiple guys, he's basically taking on her, her body count. plus her body count. And if, a if it's woman, a prostitute. Like, if a woman slept with a bunch of dudes, she's taking on the body oof. counts of the guys. Yeah. No, I know. It's double yeah. standard. But I was and just vice versa. I mean, the guys yeah. too. Yeah. I think it's totally justified if you guys care if a guy slept with prostitutes. Absolutely. Just like yeah, I think yeah. it's justified for us to care about body count. I'm not saying it's not justified. Imagine it. Wait, I just thought about this real quick, but imagine if imagine if guy a, a guy was in love with like 20 different women. Would that be a little bit of a red flag to you? A hundred percent. Because that's what you value, right? Because that's what girls value. You want him to love you and you only, right? It's that's the that I think that's the equivalent a little bit like yeah how, like if he has like twenty different kids like like twenty baby moms or something. yeah, yeah. or I here mean, maybe this is a good example a guy who is spending money not sleeping with her but spending money on another woman let's say her only that? fans if she it's he's not a guy's buying alimony them. then that should not be happening word all right I. <laughs> We we gotta we gotta pull up the take clip, guys. All right, nice. Eric, can you pull oh, up? Shit. Can you pull Here up the take go. clip? Um, just uh, the body count one. 
Or should we do? You know what's so attractive about younger women? Because we, a lot of these dudes talk about fertility and, yeah. and looks and stuff. I don't actually think it's that. I think that in the modern world, in the, in the days of old, right, you'd meet a woman, you get married, you'd be together, whatever. whatever. In the modern world, if I meet a girl who's 33 and single, I know the amount of dick that's been through her before yeah. me is just simply unattractive. I don't care how nice you are, yeah, yeah. but you're 33 years old. How yeah. many men have fucked? If I get a 19-year-old girl, I might be her second or third man, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be dude number fucking 29. Yeah. And all the trauma and heartbreak and bullshit they put you through, you're going to try and bring to my door? Yeah. Like, well, my last man cheated. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, why is that my problem? So if you pick up older women, you have to accept They've been on the carousel longer. They've had more fucking rides, more spins. Yeah. I don't want that shit. I, when I see a beautiful young woman, I know that she has a very low body count. And that, and, and also, no, but no, but the truth is this. Women's mentality is absolutely connected to sex. If a woman sleeps with a bunch of men, it's harder to penetrate her mind and make her fall it in love with you. It is unattractive, too. And it's unattractive. It is. But if she's, like, if she's had 30 dudes inside of her, she, she really didn't think, you know what, this guy's so, so, so special. Or she's going to think, you know what, he talked to me real, let's go get a new guy. Whereas if a woman's only been with a few guys, she's much more likely to fall in love with you, be a better partner. So the likelihood of her falling completely in love with you and staying loyal to you and, and really believing you're the only man for her after being through so much trauma and so many men and sleeping with so many dudes and having her heart broken and having those memories of her ex and all that crap she's been through is far less likely than meeting a nice, young, beautiful girl who hasn't been with many men. And she goes, you know what? This is the guy I, I like him. Every woman who knows this and every man who watches this can be honest. Women fall in love with the person they lose their virginity to or their second or third guy. They really remember them. They really love them. Da -da. Any woman who slept with 50 dudes, she doesn't even remember who most of them are. She doesn't care. If a woman slept with a bunch of men before you, she's less likely to stick it out through a difficult period in a relationship. She's more likely to just say, you know what? New answers, new dick. That's a pretty and, good and, answer. And that's the truth. Let me make something clear. If I meet a beautiful 30-year-old woman, I'm not saying I won't sleep with her. That's pretty fucking old. Yeah. yeah. 30? Yeah. I know. What are you, crazy? I, I, there's been times I was drunk. drunk. Your immediate reaction to the video. Go. Oh, um. <laughs> I'm thinking, is that why older men want younger girls? Exactly. Yes. Yep. That's exactly it. One of the reasons, anyways. Kind of yes. they're, more, they're less jaded. Less jaded, more fertile, less emotional baggage, mm -hmm. lower body count, all that more stuff. More physically attractive. Yeah. True. Your reaction mm -hmm. to the video? Oh, okay, yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I don't surprised. get that because <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> okay. I mean, to be honest, like, I'm just not trying to argue right Do now. Do it. Like, I don't get Lauren, that because I'm not a We man. love it, we love it when you argue. <laughs> No, we love it. Argue. Um, it, it's good um, content. We, we want you, this is a safe space <laughs> for you to argue. Know, you can I argue with us. I am. Um, but yeah, you're fine. Anyway, you're fine. yeah, I, I mean, I guess like I'm not a man and like I don't personally like. You're not? No. Um, it's like guys can think how they want to think. They're like, oh, girls are so jaded and they have their high body counts when they're older. But, <laughs> um. I don't know. I just really don't have anything to say on that. Lauren was too busy reading the chat. Yeah, no. she didn't. She didn't even <laughs> listen to the video, guys. Um, okay. Didn't even. Do you want to give a reaction? No. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I I we saw another Tate one last when I was on last time I was on, so that was that had my thoughts on it. Yeah, but, but, but yeah, fresh, so fresh, 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 fresh thoughts. Fresh. Okay. Um, Based on what he said there. Um, Did it make sense to you? Did, do you disagree with it? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not something I'd like necessarily heard before, like preferring a younger girl because it means she's been with less guys. Really, I, I didn't really realize until like very recently how much guys care about um, body count. And I'm assuming like other girls must not have either because otherwise, why would we have like young girls like thinking it's a flex to have a really high body count? So mm -hmm. I think like there's just such like, it's strange right? there's how there's so much like miscommunication between yeah. guys and girls. What girls think guys care about is just not on the point, like whatsoever. Yeah. 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 yeah no right. kidding. Yeah, yeah. Like literally yeah. like no. I, I would say Tara, I would say less than 15% of girls realize how much body count matters to guys. If, if even. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. I think, I think a lot of it, has less to do with miscommunication and more just like how much social programming there is with like yeah. hey, you know sleep through your yeah because i'm like is who is who exactly is telling like where is this message coming from that girls are in like it's empowering for girls to sleep with a lot of guys when it makes it harder to find a more valuable life partner 
and it makes it harder to find. If girls, if the stereotype is girls always want a boyfriend, why is the culture encouraging them to do more and more of the literally the exact opposite way to find a boyfriend? That's I'm a great question, I'm Sarah. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but all I know is that we need some more like female advocates out there. Yes. Just warning girls at least of like the possible cons of hookup culture will have. You should be one of them. It. You should be you one should of them. Be one I'll, of them. I'll we need get more that TikTok going. I'll do Let's it. Let's go. <laughs> I w- also, uh, just pearly things on YouTube. Highly recommend her. She's, yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's great. Your reaction to my reaction Andrew to the Tate. video is that your first time seeing Andrew Tate, by the way? Uh, no, I've seen him before okay. on Instagram. Would you date Andrew Tate? Said, no. Wait, real not. quick on this. Would you date Andrew Tate? No. No. Come on. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. Well, not, not for that. Just for, yeah. Like. No, okay, whatever. Go ahead. So there are a couple things in the video. So I understand what he's saying about, you know, the body count and when they're younger, they're less jaded. I get all of those things. Oh, the problem I had with what he said was that younger women will easier fall in love with you. So essentially what he said there is younger women are easier to manipulate. Wow, that's one way to take it. Taking that's how it in I the took worst it. possible way. Well, you're talking to a 22 year old who dated an older guy, he was 35. What a okay. chad. <laughs> Do you feel so, like he manipulated you? Yeah, absolutely. I okay. feel like I was manipulated to think that, hey, he's older, he has this stature, he wants these certain things, he says he wants a family like I do, he says all these things, right? And me, 22, being immature, I was like, yeah, let's get on board, that's what I want too. And then he's not those things. Yeah, that was fucked up for him to do that. But there's a lot of guys that do do that, yeah, that it's, date it's younger up. to manipulate, right. they do. That's, that's and so that is that. a red flag for me from that video. Yeah. Is it my turn now? Yes. Okay. Um, I've said it before. I think that it is very, um, a lot of people do think that the younger you are, the less body count you have, and the older you are, the more you've slept around. But going back to what I've said in previous podcasts, hookup culture for somebody in their 30s, back when they were in their 30s, like 20s teens was so much different than for us now where you know relationships now in my age range younger early 20s teens is a lot less um normal now i would say like there's a lot more hookup culture within my age range than there is like serious serious relationships whereas people who are in their 30s now and we're in their teens and 20s then relationships were a lot more you know easy like they they had there's a lot more so that plays into it and at the same time it's like you could meet a woman in her 30s who has been married had a high school sweetheart for years and then just became recently single and then you can meet a 20 year old whatever who has a body count higher than the woman who is 30 who's had years to rack up a body count so it really just comes into the background what, of what's the your main point girl. like what, what's your main point with that basically saying like just because a girl is younger and a woman is older doesn't mean that one's body count is gonna be like just because she's 30 she's gonna have a huge body count but but the thing is that typically the older the girl like in, when she reaches yeah. her 30s yeah. typically they have higher body counts. yeah yeah for sure yeah so if we were just to generally say due to the like react to the video Generally, yeah. yes, what he is saying is true. But if we were to really look into it, there's a lot more to it than... I, th- I think it's rare, but I think it's possible yeah. when, when girls are becoming their 30s and then have yeah. lower body counts. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Fair. But I mean, I think, I think Andrew Tate makes a great point um, because, you know, the, the, more, the more boyfriends that a, that a girl has, the more sexual partners, like all of that's baggage. And we don't want to deal with that. Like we, we don't want to deal with, a, like you know, ten plus different relationships and all the baggage that came with it. We're looking for the girls that haven't experienced all that, so that we can be the ones that you know she does really fall in love with and show her. You know, we don't want to be the the tenth or twentieth dude that's with her. Yeah, I mean Andrew Tate's point was just generally why 
men prefer younger women. That example gave one reason why, but also to your point, what you were saying, Liv, like if you have a 20 year old who has an insane amount of baggage versus, you know, if you're in your thirties and there's a woman with, she's only been with one guy, she has way less baggage. She's probably going to make a much better partner. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody's right. Honestly, yeah, it's on this side of the table. <laughs> Fuck that side of the table. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Emma Wemma with the $10 soup chat. Ladies, if your box disappeared, how would you keep a man in a relationship? Should we just pull up, end on this, pull up the uh, Patrice O'Neill? It's basically the P Patrice O'Neill thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe before we, let's wrap on the Patrice O'Neill thing. I want to give everyone like final thoughts. By the way, guys, if you want, get your last minute super chats and we're about to wrap. Um, anyone final thoughts, final question before we watch a video and wrap up? Shout out to Rolo Tomasi. Uh, yeah, he's in the yeah. chat. He's Shout been out to Rolo. fantastic for the past like three years. I think he's changing a lot of men's lives out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I discovered him like six years ago. Rolo, your book changed my life. Thank you, bro. We're going to try to get him on. I've been trying. Rolo, let's get you on the show. Let's get yeah. you on. Um, but uh, by the way, thank you for the uh, – Rolo sent me a very thoughtful uh, – well, I don't know if it was – depending on your definition of thoughtful, but he sent me a very in-depth kind of analysis feedback really uh, from my previous podcast and it was very helpful. So Rolo, thank you very much. Working on it, trying to get it together. So um, what did he say? Is that him? Right no, now? he's in the chat. It's not um, him. The rational male. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right he's right in there. the chat. What, what did he say feedback wise? Um, he, I mean, was this <laughs> with respect to the last podcast? Yeah, I think with the, the girl, the Chihuahua or what? The poodle girl awesome. um, who called me a white boy. White boy. White boy. White boy. How dare white you boy. have an opinion on this white boy? Bro, I should have gone harder. Like, looking back, I definitely bro, regret I, not I, going I harder. literally, I was in the chat, and everybody was like, bro, you need to go to the studio right now and set her straight. I literally almost got in my car and came down here, bro. You should have. You should have, because, yeah, I, I was outnumbered. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I regret not going harder. But he basically, um, he gave me some feedback it's on like a couple different course. things, but um, just some things for me to work on and as far as my presentation, recommended getting a co-host. So a couple other things too. So I don't I don't want to like get too in depth into it, but um, some yeah, good cool. some really good like constructive criticism, good feedback. Um, so Sweet. yeah, some stuff I'm working on, some stuff I kind of like already had a sense of, and definitely some new stuff though that he opened my eyes to. So Rolo, thank you, man, much appreciated. He white white claw chick logic. logic. Oh gosh, That's so real. <laughs> um, okay, so anybody last last chance. Final thought or question? No, I think I'm good for now. Oh, okay. All right, <laughs> so we're everyone. we're gonna just to kind of address that super chat. Uh, we're gonna pull up one last video and we're gonna wrap the show. Eric, if you can pull up the Patrice Neal clip. There you go. This is such a good clip. Let me ask you a question. Here's a question. Here's a good, serious question. Don't, don't reach out. Okay, ladies, watch. if you didn't have a vagina, like say it was a terrible train accident, right? And the doctor was like, we have to remove your pussy right away or you're going to die. How would you keep your man past, you get a two-month guilty, I can't leave the bitch right away because you just lost a pussy in a train accident. can't just walk right out on him. How would you keep your man past that if you didn't have a vagina? Okay, answer the question real quick. Lauren, <laughs> Lauren, go ahead. Okay, no, go to Allie. If you don't have a puss, how do you keep your man? Is that the question? Yeah. Basically, Use what he mouth. just said <laughs> is the question. She said, yeah, she said I don't know. "Use your Pass. mouth." Wait, wait, wait. Repeat it. Use your mouth. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Clever girl. Um, I was thinking more like long term. Like you can still have, you can still have kids and stuff, but yeah. Sorry. Okay, let's I go to like Lauren real thinking. quick. Go ahead, Lauren. I don't think vagina's everything. <laughs> like, oh wait, but, but just answer. answer. You got to just answer the question. So how do you keep your man if you don't have a vagina? Yes. Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Answer. 
Okay, at the end of the day, I think it doesn't come down just to sex. Why keep, is it Keep going, hand? keep going, keep going. Okay, I don't think it comes just down to sex. I think if one person loves another person, that shouldn't be the only thing that matters. Some people can't even have sex, for example. So how are you doing it? How are you doing it? How are you keeping him? You have no vagina. How are you doing it? You know, I wouldn't know because I have one of those. So <laughs> I get him that five thousand dollars sex doll. This is where the doll comes in. <laughs> I've, I've known of people who've been in relationships and have never had sex because it's like it's not possible for some reason. It's possible like to a be a paraplegic and not have sex. But you are literally losing your vagina. So like <laughs> a train a train wreck, terrible train wreck. Amtrak. I think if off love the love is there and you lose your vagina, it shouldn't affect the relationship and I don't think it would. But but what would you do? That. What what would you do differently? I just I mean I can't have sex. Yeah, I wouldn't have sex. Wouldn't would anything possible. change in your behaviors given the loss of the vagina? I guess I'd be <laughs> turning to other methods more sexually. Yeah. No, yeah, but what about like non-sexually? Okay. Non-sexually? I don't know if wait, we would whoa, change whoa, it wait, non-sexually. Wait. Hold on. Um, so what's your answer to his... So my answer to his is that, well, one, there's more than one way to be physically intimate, but this is where the actual meat and potatoes of the relationship comes in, where you have the partner, where you have that support person, where you have that cheerleader. I think at the end of the day, that's the most important over the sex. The sex is definitely needed and there's other ways of intimacy. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the type of partner you are. It's a good yes. based answer. Yeah. 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 Hit the nail on the head. Mm. Kiki. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So basically that's how we want. <laughs> we, we want, we want girls that, that act like that, but still have their pussy. Live. Well, yeah. yeah. Live. I feel like not only am I stuck in the corner, but I always have to follow up with a good answer, and I'm so I don't sorry. have it. No, you're fine. Um, sexually, sexually, sex doll, or maybe my mouth, probably my mouth. Um, Relationship-wise, I mean, I'd probably just step it up, like whatever I whatever I need to do better I talked to him like look now that sex is out of the equation and I know that frustration is gonna happen like let me know now like what I need to work on and I'll let you know and maybe we can figure something out it's a very wholesome what if answer. the guy didn't have a dick <laughs> we didn't talk about that side of it <laughs> it's over fingers. it's so over okay um <laughs> so we're over. gonna finish the clip and then would you, would you be with a guy who didn't have a dick you know what I've never been presented with that situation so I don't know. Would you be with a guy who has a micro penis? You know, I've never encountered a micro penis either. But when I do one day, I guess then I'll know. Then I'll know. Did you fuckers learn anything at college? <laughs> All right, Mike Davis, thank you for the ten dollars soup chat, Brian. I would be the perfect co-host for you since a I'm an alpha male who never takes disrespect from women. No offense. Yeah, I've, I've dropped the ball for sure tons of times on this. Uh, B, the, these feminists cannot pull the white male card. I'm busy as fuck though. Sorry. Like I said, dude, we can get you in a masquerade ball mask. I have a V for Vendetta mask that you can wear. You know, the Guy Fox mask. You can That's wear that. Friend. I have a horse head if you want to wear that. You know, those like 2012 when it was like cool for a, a couple months. Um, uh, we'll get you a mask, dude. Yeah, let me just say to Mike, you would absolutely kill it on this show would as a co-host, right dude. Yeah. Yo, Mike. You don't have to. You don't have to do a super chat, but would you be down to call in? What do you think about that? Let's get you to call in at least one time. You know, um, but yeah. thank you for the super Mike, chat, you, man. Much you would kill it. I would absolutely listen to that. That that would be so funny. Eric, can you go ahead and uh, play the rest of the uh, Patrice? Cl Let me ask you a question. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Nothing. You can talk. You can talk. Suck his dick, okay, mouth. <laughs> Asshole, okay, great. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I've been getting pussy beating the whole show, right? But I give women the opportunity to say, I'm gonna make myself worth more. But you just classified yourself as a series of holes. But, <laughs> but I, you know, I'm... <laughs> 
I'm supposed to teach you special, but you're just a bunch of holes to yourself. <laughs> No one said learn how to play Xbox, learn how to play pool, <laughs> tell better stories, get another bitch that got a pussy to come on in. Well, look, whatever. Can we get some RIPs in the chat for the GOAT, Patrice O'Neill? Uh, so, okay. Any further reaction from the panel? It's late, guys. We're going to wrap up here. Um, nothing? Hmm? It's hella funny. Nothing. Classif classify yourselves as a bunch of holes. Great way to close the joke. <laughs> okay. Um, nothing. Okay. All okay. right, guys. Okay, I got something. Okay. So, so, I mean, I think it goes back to... <laughs> I think it goes back to, um, you know, the way that women think men perceive them. Right? We think that you guys perceive us as these sexualized things objects and so that's what we think of when he says that right the typical female is gonna say oh yeah well i can just do this or you know what have you because we have been trained to think that we are sexualized objects uh it's training it's tra like it's like social conditioning right so they're saying they're telling us you know go out sleep around whatever guys are doing it too, right? That's the mentality. Guys are doing it too, you should do it. Well, I think we objectify each other in various ways. I mean, if, if women are sex objects, then men are success objects. And I'm not saying that there's a difference. I'm just saying that's where the answers come into play. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, when I hear that question, I'm waiting for women to say I would be more attentive to him. I yeah. would ask him what he needs help with. I would, you know, look for ways that I could support him, right? Like, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of other guys, obviously, they're curious, how would you pleasure me if you didn't have a pussy? But, like, that's the best answer is to say, you know, basically what you said. Think about yeah. all the ways that you could support a man. Like, that's the best answer to that question. And that's what he was joking about. A lot exactly. of women, and I, I don't think it's training. I just think, you know, I think a lot of women don't realize that they bring more to the table than just their vagina or their yeah. mouth or whatever. They you know devalue what I mean? themselves, yes. And also, I don't think that's just by training or conditioning. I think conditioning yeah. is a part of it, but what's stopping women from realizing that they bring so much more to the table? I, I also think um, the porn industry um, terrible. Yeah, I think that that's uh, maybe contributing to what you're saying as well. Absolutely. Um, I think I think porn is is going to continue increasing in, in adoption. So I think that it's it's really important that guys out there that feel addicted to porn or that are into that stuff, you know, try to get out of that habit because it's it's ruining their ability to actually approach women and talk to them in real life. So uh, actually, what do you guys think about porn? I was going to ask you guys what you guys think about it because I feel like. That would be like an. In I feel like most girls, you know. I mean, Tw I, I've from. I'm pretty sure from Pornhub, 25 percent. It's 25 percent girls, 20, uh, 75 percent guys. So, I think it's a terrible industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's really subversive and damaging relationships. I think it's way too accessible. I think it's bad for society. I think it it uh, fucks a lot of people up. You know, I think it's bad. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's terrible. What, what, do you, what do you think, Brian? I mean, I watch porn, <laughs> so I don't want to be... You're not wrong, but I also don't want to be a hypocrite. Um, I think... I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm addicted to porn. I rarely watch porn, maybe once or twice a month. Cause Here's a good question on the subject of porn. What do you guys think about the OnlyFans phenomenon? Good thing or bad thing for society? I think it's just another example of, I don't know, society telling women that like you're sexual objects, but here, empower yourself, but you're your own sexual object. Like that's still not okay. I just like think there is a million and one different ways that women can add value to their communities and get paid for it accordingly that isn't sexual and with strangers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to get Ashley to her Ventura rendezvous. So, um, yeah, I'd do. I'd love to continue this conversation. We're an hour but, late. but yeah, I'd love to continue the conversation. But we schedule. have run a little bit over. So we're gonna wrap up here. Thank you for tuning in. You could have been doing anything else, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. We will be live again Thursday at seven p.m. 
And uh, thank you so much to all of you guys for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thanks to the cool panel. It was a good, good conversation. And uh, thanks to you guys for watching. You guys were awesome. And uh, yeah, guys, we will see you next time.